Good evening, sports fans, and welcome to Pickett Field on the campus of Appleton East High School, the site for tonight's huge football game between the visiting, well, they're both visitors, actually, if you think about it, the visiting Kimberly Papermakers and the host Fond du Lac Cardinals. It's a Fox Valley Classic Football Conference playoff final here at Appleton East High School. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ricardo Arguello. Hanging out, as always, with Breck Christofferson and bringing you those high-definition shots is Jim Rosendick. We're a part of the USA Today Live was or USA Today Network Wisconsin digital live stream team, and this is the big one. This is the one we've been waiting all season for, and it's finally here on an uh, early May evening here. Bit cold. It's uh, it feels like it's fall weather, but it is early May. And Brett, this is the one we've been talking about for I don't know how many weeks. We finally get it. Big game. We've talked about it for weeks coming in. You got to be excited. I know you are. Hey, Ricardo, you said it's an early May evening, but it, there's a little crispness in the air. It feels a little bit like championship playoff football, doesn't it, uh, outside? And that's kind of what we have. It, there is no state final, state tournament here in this alternate fall season played in the spring, but this is about as close to a state semifinal, maybe even a state championship game as you're going to find here in, in this alternate fall season. So we got a good crowd. We got lots of media here. We got. Uh, a buzz. We've got some star power on both sides. You know, we're going to talk about some of these players, and we got two of the top teams in the state. And it would have been interesting to see how the fall season would have gone in a normal season, but you play with a hand you're dealt, right? And this is the hand we're dealt. We've got a great game, Ricardo, to close out this fall alternate season. I cannot wait for kickoff. Hey, Brett, the sun just came out. I'm feeling a little it better. It's all rainbow before, it, too. Yeah, it was a bit uh, cloudy, a little overcast, and. Uh, but no, we're ready for this big one here. Well, we're going to start off with some uh, specific notes for either squad. Uh, I'll start off with Fond du Lac, and Brett will finish up with the Kimberly notes again. Brett put these all together uh, himself, uh, as he's done every week, uh, with information gleaned from our friends at Wisports.net. Yes. Just want to give them a shout-out. So anyway, Brett, the Fond du Lac Cardinals ranked number one in the large schools division in this week with Sports.net state coaches poll. They're coming off a 47 victory, 42 to seven victory over Appleton North last Friday and a Fox Valley Classic Football Conference playoff semifinal at Keel High School. Fond du Lac churned out 444 yards rushing with quarterback Kyle Wall Jasper leading the way with 290 yards in the ground and three touchdowns on 20 attempts. That's good enough for a 14 and a half yards per carry average. Brett, that's actually below his season average, 14 and a half yards. The Minnesota Duluth recruit scored on runs of 6, 59, and 69 yards. His 69-yard scamper came with 258 remaining in the third quarter and capped the scoring. Wall Jasper, he can throw two. He also threw for 71 yards and two touchdowns on 5 of 8 passing. He hooked up with Lewis Wagner Lang on a 16-yard score in the first quarter. He later connected with Tyler Colleen on a 15-yard uh, touchdown. With just five seconds remaining in the second quarter, that pushed the Cardinals' lead to 28 to nothing. University of Wisconsin recruit Braylon Allen rushed for 119 yards and a touchdown, including a 27-yard dash to open the third quarter scoring. And defensively, Walt Jasper and Allen each finished with 10 total tackles. Allen was also credited with a forced fumble and a sack. On the season, Walt Jasper has thrown for 686 yards and eight touchdowns while completing 64% of his passes. He has tossed three interceptions. Walt Jasper is also Fond du Lac's top rusher with 1,161 yards and 16 touchdowns. Allen is next with 769 yards rushing and 17 touchdowns. Now combined, Wall Jasper and Allen, they've rushed for nearly 2,000 yards, 1,930 to be specific, and 33 touchdowns. That's 87% of the Cardinals team's rushing total and total rushing touchdowns. And Wall Jasper, Brett, talked about his game last week being just below his per carry average. He's averaging rushing the football, Wall Jasper is, 18.7 yards crazy. a carry. He's one of the stars we were talking about, the star Allen, power. Allen, well, he's only averaging 13 yards a carry, <laughs> Brett. Uh, and uh, you were looking at some of these other offensive leaders for them. Braden Egenbrot has rushed for 202 yards and four scores. And as for the receivers, Colleen leads the way with team highs in receptions with 16, receiving yards with 365, and receiving touchdowns with five. Now defensively, Braylon Allen's 41 total tackles are tops on the team. He also has five for loss. Three sacks, four fumble, and an interception. He does it all. He does everything. Walt Jasper is next with 37 tackles, including six for loss and two sacks. And Keegan Henschel, he's third with 32 tackles, a sack, and a fumble recovery. And as a team, Fond du Lac averaging 56.3 points a game and allowing 9.5. The Cardinals are averaging 137 yards per game, passing and allowing 81.3. They've also recorded four interceptions. They're averaging just under 370 rushing yards a game, and they're allowing... 111.5 and this is as we know 
the season finale for both teams. Brett, what can you tell me about Kimberly? Again, Kimberly 6-0, just like Fond du Lac coming into this game. And the Papermakers are ranked number two in the large schools division in this week's uh, Wisports.net state coaches poll. They're coming off uh, a 35-14 win over Nina uh, last Friday in a Fox Valley Classic Football Conference playoff semifinal. A game, Ricardo, that we streamed at Papermaker Stadium just down the road in Kimberly. Northern Iowa recruit Caleb Frazier, another uh, of the big names here uh, tonight. He scored two of his three touchdowns in a second half that saw Kimberly outscore the Rockets 21 to zip. Frazier finished with 145 yards on 19 carries and had rushing scores of 16, 1, and 12 yards. Also adding uh, rushing touchdowns were quarterback Caden Pendleton, a 25-yard scamper with 137 remaining in the third quarter. That gave Kimberly a 28-14 lead. And then Parker Kester, who raced in from 42 yards out with 318 to go in the second quarter. Overall, uh, Ricardo in that game, the Papermakers finished with 229 rushing yards. Pendleton had another strong showing in the passing game with 103 yards on 11 of 16 throwing. Owen Polakowski, he finished with five catches for 52 yards. And don't forget about Cam Winnick, three catches for 36 yards. Defensively, Mason Stepanski, he led the way with 12 total tackles. DeAndre Williams was credited with seven tackles and two sacks, and Griffin Weigel posted an interception. On the season, Pendleton has thrown for 674 yards and 10 touchdowns while completing 70% of his passes. He has yet to throw an interception. Frazier leads a, a very strong three-pronged rushing attack with 774 yards and 11 touchdowns and 98 carries. That's good enough for an eight yards per carry average. Kester is next uh, in rushing with 201 yards and three TDs on 32 attempts. Colin Oberman, don't forget about him. He's third with 148 yards and a score on 23 carries. Polakowski and Winnick paced the papermakers receivers. Winnick has 14 receptions for 195 yards and four touchdowns, while Polakowski has 13 catches for 252 yards and three scores. Frazier, Ricardo, also with four grabs for 81 yards and a TD. Defensively, Stepanski, Kimberly's top tackler with 44 stops. Damon Loker is next with 41 total tackles, including three for a loss. Tommy Ellison, he has three interceptions on the season as a team. Kimberly is averaging 38.7 points per game and allowing 8.8. The Papermakers are averaging 120 yards per game, passing and allowing just 67.3. They've also come up uh, with four interceptions, and they're averaging 218.2 rushing yards per game and allowing 112.2. Brett, great job to get that all in before our national anthem. That's why you're the best. Nice job on the national anthem. Brett, we're getting ready for tonight's big game here at Pickett Field on the campus of Appleton East High School between Fond du Lac and Kimberly. Originally, Ricardo, this game was, at least last Friday, announced to be, it was going to be played at Kimberly, Papermaker right. Stadium, and then a late switch. Wondering if that had something to do with Kimberly already had four home games in right. Fond du Lac. We'll talk about this a little bit later on. Uh, they, th they have only had three home games, so I guess this constitutes as a home game since 
Truth Field was unavailable this spring. They've been actually playing a lot of their home games, I think all of their home games previously at Keele High School because Keele has turf, Truth Field does not. So here we are at, uh, at Pickett Field, and I have to thank uh, a few a few folks. Uh, first, Dave Mikkelkavich, the athletic director yes. at Fond du Lac High School. We've known Dave, Dave forever. I used to cover him when he was an athlete at St. Mary Central and a very good athlete at that. So um, here he is now as an athletic director. It shows you how old I, I'm getting. You're old. But also Tim Zakow, the athletic director here also at Appleton uh, East for making the facility available and making sure uh, we're all good to go. And we have a, a few other folks to uh, thank as well. We'll get to them later on in the night. Just getting ready for kickoff here at Pickett Field. So Cam uh, Fond du Lac, Ricardo, will be the home team tonight. Yes. Wearing the home blacks, uh, uh, uniforms of... Uh, Kimberly wearing the road whites. And before we get started, a, a, th a shout out to our, our sponsors first, Festival Foods. They have a deep sense of community pride and responsibility, which is why they are dedicated to making a positive impact throughout Wisconsin. Festival Foods knows that getting involved and doing good is part of being a good neighbor and a member of the community. And they strive to be a true asset to our communities and embody the give back spirit of Wisconsin. And uh, the Community First Fox Cities Marathon registration now open for the 30th running of the Community First Fox Cities Marathon. Secure your spot to be at this year's events. They run September 17th through the 19th. There's a safe race for every pace, but participation is limited for this year, so you want to register soon to make sure you're part of the uh, celebration. Visit foxcitiesmarathon.org for details. And folks, Ricardo's running this year. I am not running, but I'll tell you what, I'll be there after the marathon to... Uh Get my snack game on, because I usually have pretty good food there. I know because I cover that hey, marathon. Kimberly uh, gets set to kick off. Uh, Braylon Allen, number one, and number 13, David MacArthur, back to receive this kip. And here we go, Ricardo. Short one. They let that one go right out of bounds, Brad. So a penalty to start the game for Kimberly. Is that a little bit of that uh, special teams type hijinks we've seen from Kimberly? Oh, they may be trying to get the, the ball back right away well, or at least, least making them think about yeah, it? Yeah, I was just going to say I think it might be more of the latter, what you just described there, Brett, here for Kimberly. But for Fond du Lac, pretty decent starting position. It'll be at the 35. So first and 10 for Kyle Wall Jasper and the powerful, powerful Fond du Lac run game. Talking about the special teams, and what I mean by that is it against Ashwaubenon and then Appleton North, too, a little kind of pooch kicks on their kickoff. Yes. They've been able to return uh, or, or, or uh, corral the, the loose ball for uh, an onside kick. So something to keep in mind in, in that kicking game for uh, Kimberly as far as special teams goes. Strength against strength here, Brett. This Fond du Lac offense against Kimberly's defense. We'll see how things unfold as Braylon Allen right away. Oh, I look at him power that pile. Strong, strong young man. Ricardo, I'll let you talk about Braylon Allen because we have mentioned him on our streams before, but uh, he's reclassified. He has. Uh, he started the year as a junior, reclassified as a senior, so he can get over to uh, the Madison campus a year early and team with Hunter Wohler there as two of their big recruits. Hunter Wohler, the standout player from Muskego. Brett, he has gained 30 pounds, I want to say 25 to 30 pounds of, of muscle Talk over this year. Yeah, Braylon Allen. Allen, he mm -hmm. is uh, just young, so he's going to hit that uh, Madison campus. Very young, but very strong, and uh, we'll kind of talk about some of the uh, weightlifting, uh, weight room exploits by Allen. Uh, he's posted a couple of videos on his Twitter account. They're very impressive. What is he, 16, 17 years old right now? So. Uh, we, we noticed I mean, him as a, uh, coming up as a freshman, I think, he was yes. playing on varsity. He's like, wow, who is this kid? So... Uh, one of the best in the state of Wisconsin uh, playing tonight here. Number one, Braylon Allen. Third and one, Ricardo coming up for the Cardinals. Well, Jasper giving it right to Allen again, and Allen That's going to be close. I think he's short. Based on where that sideline official's coming up, he's short of the line to gain. So fourth down coming up, and decision time for Steven Jorgensen. Ball will be placed at the 44. Brett, it is going to be fourth and one. Half a yard. And I think if you're a Fond du Lac, you have so much faith in that offensive line to get one yard. Uh, this doesn't really surprise me at all. But but look, at, look for Colleen here, the receiver. You know, would would, would they attempt something? Uh, no, I think they stick with uh, their okay. bread and butter. Well, actually, that's, that's MacArthur down there uh, near side at receiver. I think it's either Wall Jasper, and Wall Jasper is going to keep it looking, getting that push. He got it. He just got it. Pretty good pursuit and uh, by that Kimberly defense. But you look at Wall Jasper, number 17. He's 6'1", 220 pounds. So that's a big, strong quarterback back there. And he got just enough. First down for the Cardinals, ball at the 45-yard line. Brett, that might be the most difficult time the Fondy offense has had all season in getting 10 yards. It took them four attempts. 
So Kimberly's defense already slowing down, slowing down that juggernaut run game of the Cardinals to start. But as we know, sooner or later, you know they're going to pop off one of those big ones. Yeah, quite often in, in these early games, uh, we'll, we'll go through the scoring and, and how they pounded teams. But uh, they, they'd have touched it on the board by now, wouldn't they? Yeah. Well, Jack, we're up the middle. Here, go. here he goes. Look at this. This is going to be a 55-yard touchdown for Wall Jasper. Brett, I was just talking about how sooner or later that big run's going to come, and it came. 9.38 left here in the first quarter, and Wall Jasper takes it 55 yards for the touchdown. How about that? Just uh, kind of on cue what we were saying, how quickly they can strike. As we have... Justin Shebrel yeah. on to uh, kick the PAT, his brother, of course. We'll talk about him, the big kick he had back in 2018. Good uh, kicking family, uh, the Shebrels. That one is through. And as we look at our Festival Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard, took five plays, Ricardo. Wall Jasper's 55-yard score makes it 7 nothing final here in the early stages of this playoff championship. Yeah, I'm updating my Twitter. You can follow me at PC Ricardo. Brett's at PC Brett C. And Rosie's at Metal Rosie. Boy, Wall Jasper again going to Minnesota Duluth to play uh, his collegiate uh, football. And uh, what a sensational, uh, it seems like he's been there forever, doesn't it? I mean, uh, what, what, yeah. a, what a quarterback. You remember Carson Raditz, he was another good one. So they've had a, a great run of QBs to, down at Fond du Lac. And I believe, I'm looking at the uh, the game or the, the game notes here. That's uh, 17 rushing touchdowns now for Wall Jasper. That ties him with Braylon Allen for the team lead. Remember, coming in, it was unbelievable how much they account for the offense, the total offense. Here's Frazier taking it at the 11. Yeah, and he's got him. a little bit of a room too, doesn't he? Cuts it. Takes a big shot, but that's a nice return and pretty good field position for Kimberly. Ricardo coming into this game, as I uh, mentioned in the game notes, Wall Jasper and Braylon Allen, they had combined for 87% of the Cardinals' team rushing total and rushing touchdowns. Ball be placed just, well, actually right at the 40-yard line, so that's where Kimberly will start with good field position. And Wall Jasper averaging 18.7 yards per carry coming in. I think that went up a little bit. First and 10 for Pendleton. Tight set for the paper makers. Boy, nothing doing there. Look at that uh, Fondy defense swarming. Frazier stopped for no gain. Second and 10 coming up. Brings up second down and 10 again at the 40. Paper makers are already, already behind 7 0 to Fond du Lac. 55 yard touchdown run by Wall Jasper put the Cardinals ahead. What a series this has been, though. We'll talk about the, this after the next play, but you, you, you kind of did my homework for me because you had a real nice preview article about this game that you, you can find on postcrescent.com, but it's been unbelievable how close this series has been, although Kimberly has, has sort of dominated, I guess you could say. It gets in the win column, but yeah. they've all been competitive games. Talk about that here in a moment. Second and ten. Hand up. No, nope. Pendleton's going to try to keep Wall. I think Braylon Allen was there wrestling. Pendleton down. And that's the thing about Fond du Lac. You, you got Braylon Allen and Kyle Wall Jasper playing both ways. And uh, not only the offensive leaders, but the defensive leaders of this team as well. And I think, you know, that's been something Fondy's done. Uh, Raditz. The, Raditz did the same thing. We talked about, is he going to, uh, you know, is, is a kid like Carson going to kind of wear down? They don't. So that is a you don't kudos to the great conditioning program at Fond du Lac. You don't see that at the, the, the Division One level very often, do you? Two-way players. Third down and nine for Pendleton. Pendleton's got time. Sling wide open. Wide open over the middle. Look at this. Stumbling, and he is down inside the five. Ricardo, that is Owen Polakowski. 
Maybe just a little slant inside over the middle, but Pendleton had time. Nice pocket step through and uh, found Polakowski. And look at this. Is it down at the three? That's where they're going to spot it at the three-yard line. 56-yard pass play, Brett, for so Polakowski. <laughs> some explosive plays in the early stages of this one. Well, I thought that's some place that maybe Kimberly could attack Fond du Lac was through the pass game. They've Brett. got the receivers, they don't do. they? they got a bunch of playmakers and in a, that passing game. And a very accurate quarterback who doesn't make mistakes. So first down, goal to goal at the three. Kimberly give us to Frazier. He's met by a host of defenders. Yeah, I'm not sure if he got a yard out of that or not. So let's see where they spot it. I think there was no gain, Brett. So second and goal. Ball remains at the three. And a kid in, in, in Caden Pendleton that we've seen, you know, he, he got a lot of obviously starts of playing time as a sophomore, and he's really grown. He's really uh, come into his own as uh, one of the top quarterbacks in this conference. He's going to be fun to watch here in the fall for his senior season. Absolutely, Brett. And that's only coming up in a few months, my friend. <laughs> it is, isn't it? There's Frazier again looking for something. Boy, Braylon Look at Allen. Braylon Allen. He's kind of shaking his head. That's a. Uh, I ran into Caleb Fraser's uh, grandfather before the game. We were kind of talking. I said, there's going to be some fun collisions between 33 and 1, and there was one of them. That's a one-yard gain, third and goal at the two. Well, well now you're, you're, you're down territory. Yeah, you're dependent on this paper maker's offensive line, which has really progressed nicely this season. Expecting those big guys up front. I mean, you need two yards for the score. Again, Brett, I agree with you. I think it's four down territory here. I'm impressed with the push that Fond du Lac defensive line has been getting so far uh, against that run game. There's Frazier. Got a big hole left side. Two-yard touchdown he was in. Good vision by Frazier. We've seen that. The little kind of cut and uh, wide open uh, lane on that left side of the line. And what an answer for the papermakers. Yeah, six-play, 60-yard drive there, Brett. Obviously the big pass play, 56 yards to Polakowski was the biggest play of that drive. But Kimberly answers, Brett, I think in an impressive way. Very impressive. Cam Zebel's kick is good. And uh, just as we expected, right, some early fireworks uh, both sides. Wall Jasper with the 55-yard touchdown run. Pendleton to Polakowski with the, the big gainer to set up uh, what ends up being a two-yard touchdown plunge for Caleb Frazier. And with 6.07 to play here in this opening court as we look at our Festival Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. We're all tied up 7-7 here at Pickett Field. Just updating my Twitter again. Follow me at PC Ricardo, Brett at PC Brett C, and Rosie at Metal Rosie. Talking about, uh, again, I wanted to, to touch on uh, how, how close these games have been. Now, Kimberly has beaten Fond du Lac in five of the previous six meetings, as uh, you wrote, Ricardo, and that includes three times in the postseason. But all of the games have been decided by a touchdown or less with the last two of these games going into overtime. Now, the two 2018 meetings came down to the game's final play, literally. Remember those games? The, yeah. the, home, the uh, season opener in 2018, Fond du Lac won 31-28. to That ended Kimberly's state record 70-game winning streak on Jared uh, Shubrell's 26-yard field goal with one second remaining, and then the two teams met in the state semifinals down at Titan Stadium. Kimberly wins that one, 22-21 in overtime on the two-point conversion pass from Cody Starkle to uh, Mitch Bartle. Remember that classic showdown? The last time these two teams met was uh, in 2019, Kimberly winning that one, 34-31 in overtime. And that's MacArthur taking it near the 35-yard line for Fondy. Then you look back at 2017, Kimberly wins 35-28. Earlier in the 2017 season, a state quarterfinal, Kimberly wins 28-21. And then in 2016, a state quarterfinal, Kimberly wins 32-29. So you see how close these games have been. And let's hope we get another uh, showdown like that tonight. It'd be a fun way to end this spring season. This alternate fall season. I don't know. How do you define alternate fall, spring? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've been calling it by a bunch of different terms, actually, Brett. First down and 10 at the 34 for Fond du Lac. And uh, give us the Breland Allen oh, up geez. the middle. Look, Look at this at again. That. Look at this. Look at this. 
66 yards for Braylon Allen. Oh, are you kidding me? 66 yards on one play. Brett, Brett, that's just blocked very well. You know, but by the time he hit the line, he was to the second level and no one was around him. Wow. Are we, are we in for a big uh, offensive we, showcase? We, we might be. Why not? Holy smokes. And uh, Braylon Allen telling Kyle Wall Jasper, now I have the team lead in rushing touchdowns again. That's right. <laughs> Shrebel in for the PAT. That one sails through. And uh, so far, Ricardo living up to its hype, isn't it? I mean, three explosive plays, two by the Cardinals. Wall Jasper already has his touchdown, a 55-yard dash, and now we just saw Braylon Allen on a 66-yard sprint. And then, of course, Pendleton to Polakowski. What was that, a 50-plus yarder? I forget uh, exactly what that was, but that set up the 56 yards. 56 yard hookup that set up Caleb Frazier's uh, two-yard run. Wow. What's the time on that, Brett? That's at 5.50. Ro Rosie, you okay down there? You're going to be able to like, – this is like basketball. Rosie <laughs> and I sometimes joke at these high uh, – Octane offense as we get in, in basketball, trying to keep pace. Three touchdowns, and we're barely a halfway through this first quarter. You're watching top-level athletes here, Brett. I'm telling you that right now. Two of the best programs in the state. Number one versus number two. We already have three touchdowns on three offensive possessions. There's Jackson Wilds looking for a lane to return and wrestle down. Pretty good special teams coverage by Fond du Lac. That was number 14. Caleb uh, Nell's a sophomore for the Cardinals wrestling, or uh, closing in fast on Wilds. So a long field coming up for Kimberly. Ball going to be at the 16 yard line, first and 10. Both teams 6 and 0. Oh, kind of felt like this was going to be the matchup, right, when we saw how this was going yeah. to play out. Game of the night in the state. Well, this is the kind of stuff that you measure yourself up against if you're good teams, Brad, other top teams. And I know Kimberly was very excited for this opportunity, as was Fond du Lac coming in. Pendleton, he's going to sling it. That's a... Uh, look at this little move by number 14, Cam Winnick, the junior and. Ricardo, I think you're dead on. I think uh, I think this is where Kimberly is going to have the most success offensively is Pendleton spreading the ball around. He's got some great receivers. He's got time in the pocket. And that passing game has really evolved even uh, just in the few weeks that we've been streaming these games. Uh, the last handful uh, we've been catching the, the paper makers against Applin North and then last week against Nina. We saw Kimberly earlier against Eschwabanon. This is our first look at Fond du Lac. 16-yard gain on that uh, win at catch, Brett. So Kimberly getting the yards in big yeah, chunks look, look at as this. well. Five receivers now. Everybody, uh, the formation spread out. So a little timing pattern. There's Polakowski. Here, Kimberly, you're almost thinking, let's let's have a nice, slow, methodical drive here, right, and keep that <laughs> Fond du Lac off, yes. off the field. You wonder about the Kimberly defense. they got to be shell-shocked. I mean, a little bit, yeah. an outstanding defense so far this season. Exactly. I mean, you're talking about um, uh, nearly 120 yards that Fond du Lac has rushed for in the first quarter. Usually, Kimberly allows that in a game, mm -hmm. you know, even less than that. Different animal tonight, though. And that was something that Coach Jones had told me about uh, – Yesterday when I was talking to him that, yeah, you know, those two those two players are elite players, while Jasper and Allen, it's going to be a big challenge for his defense to try to slow them down. Second down and five as Frazier. Well, he's got a seam on the left he side. Does. Look at him go. Boy, look at Allen closing in fast. Well, you can see both well, both reasons why both well, why both those guys are going to go Division One level. I mean, uh, Frazier with his vision, we've talked about that uh, in, in previous streams, but then you see that closing speed by, by Braylon Allen. It looked like uh, Frazier had a little bit more running room there, and it closed off fast. First and 10 for Kimberly. They're near midfield. They scored on their first position as well. Here's Caden Pendleton, Frazier in the backfield. 
Oh, big. Oh, jeez. There's Wall Jazz for Matt Frazier, Frazier but Frazier bounces off. Yeah. And that's going to be right near the 50 yard line, Brett. Let's see where they'll mark this. It's at least a gain of four yards, it looks like. Second down and six. Just shy of the midfield marker. Justin Shebrel, the kicker, also getting in on that as well. Second down and six at the 49 for Kimberly Pendleton. A couple of big throws already thus far to start. Parker Kester in the backfield with Pendleton. Little play action. Boy, nice throw. Fumble! Ball is in the air is right. You can hear it in the next booth. Let's see I think who has Kimberly it. Kimberly might have recovered it, actually. Okay. Oh, boy. It, it looked like Fondy had it, but I do think it's Kimberly. Wow. Ball. I didn't see who uh, got the hit. That was Mason Lawton, the uh, senior wideout. Uh, he caught it. It was a nice little play, but somebody came in hard and popped that ball loose somehow. I think he might have fallen on it. He did. How did he, how did he recover that? There was about three Fondy guys around. That's like when you watch basketball and, yeah. and you got four guys and then one, you know, you think they're boxing out the, the one guy underneath and somehow the, that, that one guy gets the rebound. Well, that was Lawton right there. He, he somehow came up. I must have taken a nice fortuitous bounce. First and 10 at the 43. Now Kimberly again in Fond du Lac territory. And again, this passing game is what's, you know, working so far for the papermakers. They're in a rhythm, aren't they? A little, whoa, knocked down. That's number five for Fond du Lac. That's Tyler Vandeslunt. Boy, he's only 5'8", Brett, but he's skied up for that uh, pass defense. Yeah, good job knocking that ball down. There was uh, an opportunity there for another completion for Pendleton, who uh, started out actually red hot. First incompletion it of the night for It is his first uh, incompletion, Pendleton. yeah. Second and 10, ball at the uh, Fond du Lac 43-yard line. A whole bunch of uh, big explosive plays. Here goes Frazier. And uh, there's Wall Jasper bringing him down. You know, Brett, they were pulling on that play, and Wall Jasper was able to follow that pull and make the tackle on Frazier. Yeah. Very, very good fundamentals here for Fond du Lac. They're, they're not allowing themselves to be trapped or anything like that or get off their, their, their seams, Brett. Good defense here. One yard gain for Frazier, third down and long now. You know, I'm curious, uh, maybe somebody can tweet it to me, at PC Bretzi, but where, where does Wall Jasper uh, project when he plays at Minnesota Duluth? Is he going to be a on the defensive side? Because he, he has really good closing speed as well. He could be a, a safety type player, or could you see him more at a linebacker spot? Or is he looking at offense? Uh, I'd be kind of curious to know. As Pendleton, he's got time. Downfield wide open, but oh, just misses just his target. Brett, I mean, he had all day to throw. Yeah. And uh, that was just a missed opportunity for Fond or for Kimberly, I should say, and I think they're going to punt here. No, I think they're going for it. The offense is staying on the field. Pendleton's over to talk to oh. Steve Jones. So uh, they figure yeah, they were in uh, Fond du Lac territory. Ball at the 42-yard line, fourth and nine. Let's see what we can do. I think they're going to try the old, uh, try to get them off sides maybe, make it a little shorter uh, opportunity here. A lot of movement here before pre-snap, Brett. Pendleton, he's looking right. He's got a receiver, not a catch by Polakowski. He has got the first down along the sideline. He went up and made a great catch on what was uh, kind of a fastball by Pendleton. 13-yard gain, and Brett, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, Fond du Lac, as well as they are playing against the run, I think Kimberly feels that they can throw the ball yeah. on them. You're seeing a very comfortable Caden Pendleton right now and uh, piling up a whole bunch of yards right now in that passing game. First and 10 at the 29. And you, got, you, look, you love the confidence in, first of all, Steve Jones with his offense. But how about Pendleton? He is really in a rhythm right now. And uh, a heck of a grab by Polakowski. 6'3", 187 pounds. Talked about him uh, quite a bit in that basketball season. Pendleton, first down and 10 at the 29. Frazier off the right side. Nice gain. Yeah, nice job to uh, squeeze through Michael Towell, the uh, senior, bringing down Frazier. Five-yard gain for Frazier brings up a manageable second and five situation. But I like what Kimberly's doing because we all know how potent Fondy's offense is. Let's keep them off the field. I was just going to say the same thing. This has been a really nice drive. 
Milking the clock here, uh, winding down this first quarter under a minute to play. Yeah. You're exactly right. Keep that offense off the field as long as possible. Control the clock. Brett, this, uh, off, or this drive, 10 plays. This is the 11th play of the drive. And in no hurry. No hurry to get to the line. Second down coming up as Pendleton awaits the snap. Looking downfield again. He's got win it wide, wide open. open. Caught Mark over the shoulder. I mean, what a throw from 24 yards out. As as well as Fond du Lac is playing on offense and getting those big holes, Kimberly is just picking them apart in the pass game, Brett. Beautiful throw and catch. I mean, Wenick wasn't even touched off the line of scrimmage. He was allowed basically to run free. Wow. Boy, he put that ball on a spot and good concentration by Winnick, who uh, got past the, the defense and they like made that a nice over-the-shoulder grab. Brett, they, they like that matchup. That was one read. He went immediately to Winnick on that play. Didn't even look anywhere else. And the, the two heavyweights doing just that. A little sparring right now here in this first round, this first quarter. Zeebel's kick sails through, and with 23.1 seconds to go in this opening quarter, look at our Festival Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. We're all tied up, 14 apiece here at Pickett Field, Appleton East High School. So impressed right now with, well, with both sides. Both offenses are humming right now. Of course, Wall Jasper and Braylon Allen. Wall Jasper with a 55-yard touchdown run. Then the one play, 66-yard uh, uh, touchdown sprint by Braylon Allen. But Caleb Frazier with a two-yard run, that, but that was set up uh, on a 56-yard completion from Pendleton to Polakowski. The fourth-yard completion, fourth and nine. That was a 13-yard hookup between Pendleton and Polakowski on this previous drive that sets up a beautiful 24-yard hookup from Pendleton to Cam Winnick. Brett, 11 plays, 84 yards for Kimberly on that touchdown drive. You're going to need a, some sort of calculator here tonight, or are you, you okay? I mean, can no, you I'm okay. You, I mean, there's a lot of offense going on right now. Let me tell you, I got, uh, you know, I got the UW-Milwaukee uh, your degree. I did have to take a math course uh, in my general eds, my friend. So you I did, feel uh, very the, confident. The abacus? <laughs> Not saying I had a good grade in that m one math class, but yes. Well, look out. Yeah, that was kind of... We've seen that, uh, not not quite as short as we've seen those little pooch kicks, but <laughs> that was number 13, David MacArthur, I think, uh, scooping it up at the last second. That was a live ball, but with, uh, what do we got? 25-yard line, is yeah. that where they have it at? That's where it's marked with 18.9 seconds to go. Again, thanks to everybody checking us out tonight on postcrescent.com, fdlreporter.com. Actually, we're doing all four of our uh, Facebook pages along 41. Press Gazette, the Post Crescent, the Oshkosh Northwestern, and the, the Fond du Lac Reporter, and our YouTube channel. Please subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel, USA Today Network, Wisconsin. Here's Wall Jasper. Gets loose again. Away. Wow. wow. How did strong. he do that? He is so strong. That could be the end of the first quarter, Brett. So 14-14. Very entertaining first quarter. Fun, isn't it? They're playing like two of the, the two top teams in the state, which big, they are. Big time plays, big time uh, athletes. We're getting uh, exactly what we bargained for here tonight, uh, living up to the hype so far here after this opening quarter. Hey, thanks again to our sponsors. Uh, First Festival Foods, the folks at Festival Foods know that getting involved and in doing good is part of being a good neighbor and member of the community. And they strive to be a true asset to our communities and embody the give back spirit of Wisconsin. And registration now open for the 30th running of the community first Fox Cities Marathon. Visit foxcitiesmarathon.org for details. And uh, while we're uh, in between quarters, hey, we've got a great deal on a digital subscription right now to the Post Crescent, the Fond du Lac Reporter, Press Gazette, Oshkosh Northwest, and all of our USA Today Network Wisconsin websites. For the next six months, you can get all the benefits included with a digital subscription for just $1. Learn more details. Sign up for a digital subscription at postcrescent.com slash subscribe. Actually, all of the sites. And then you go slash subscribe. Six months 
One dollar, watch out, here we go again, Allen on the run. Look at the sprinter speed, trying to get tripped up, finally pushed out of bounds. Can't stop it. No. Where are they gonna mark him out there, Brett? Looks like it's gonna be the 17 yard line. I thought he was gone. 53-yard gain Holy for Braylon smokes. Allen, though. What is the rushing total right now? That's crazy. So we have, uh, just on those two, three big runs, we have almost 170 yards or 180 yards. For the Fond du Lac rushing game? Just just on those three, the two touchdown runs in oh, that yeah. one. Unbelievable. So first and 10, ball at the Kimberly 17. Now Wall Jasper, he's going to keep it. Oh, he pitches it out to Allen. Nice tackle, though, by number two, Griffin Weagle. Brought Allen down, wrapped up the legs. Not an easy thing to do, but still not before Fondy gets about five or six yards. You saw that was setting up. I thought uh, Wall Jasper, that's kind of a risky little pitch, though, because he was getting wrapped up there, too. Six-yard gain for Braylon Allen, second down and four. Yeah, ball at the 11. This uh, Fondy offensive line is just having its way with Kimberly. Wall Jasper up the middle. He's inside, maybe right at the five. Six yard gain and a first down for Wall Jasper. First down, goal to goal from the five for the Cardinals. If you're this Kimberly defense, somehow you, you gotta hope you can knock the ball loose. Wall Jasper, he's gonna keep it, looking for some space, and I think he's he in. is, is he in? That is a touchdown for Wall Jasper, five yard score. Boy, he just lowers that uh, shoulder, doesn't he? Those shoulders, and he just barrels his way through. Second touchdown run of the night for Kyle Wall Jasper. Mm. Chevrolet makes the PAT look easy and. 10.36 to play here in the second quarter. Fond du Lac back in front, 21 to 14 as we look at our Festival of Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. See if I can add up these uh, the rushing total so far, Brett. In terms of average for play, it's been uh, fantastic for the Cardinals. Well, let me run down the score. You know, these scores are kind of uncharted territory for both of these Teams, you look at Fond du Lac, uh, they beat Manitowoc 63-7, Nina 56-21, Spash 52-zip, Green Bay Preble 63-3, Bayport 62-19, and Appleton North 42-7 for Kimberly. The Papermakers beat Sheboygan South 56-zip, Pulaski 23-6, Eschwabanon 42-13, Appleton East 31-6, Appleton North 45-14, and Nina 35-14. Not used to seeing so much offense. 207 yards I have on rushing for Fond du Lac on 11 plays. Brett, you know, that's nearly 20 yards of carry. So right now we'll see if uh, Kimberly can answer again. They're, they're as great, again, as great as Fond du Lac has been rushing the ball, Kimberly has been passing it all over Fond du Lac. So might have a little bit of uh, alternating styles here, Brett. Jackson Wilds has the ball looking for a return. He's got some speed and gets around the edge near the 20-yard line. Got a tweet from Oshkosh Herald Sports uh, saying, Wall Jasper hoping to play quarterback in college. DB will be his secondary option if he doesn't win the quarterback job. So Kyle Wall Jasper looking to be the signal caller for Minnesota Duluth uh, at the next level. Hey, I want to send a shout out to Wes Gold Goldfoyle. Remember him? Yeah, I do. He's fast. He's very fast, and he's uh, watching and cheering on his Kimberly as a Kimberly alum he is. So. Thanks, Wes, for checking us out, my friend. Hope you're doing well. I bet you if he gave me an 80-meter start <laughs> in the 100, he'd still beat me. By 20 yards. 
Probably. 20, 20 meters, I should say. First down and 10 at the 18 for Kimberly. Frazier looking for some space. Good hard run. Looks like it's about a gain of two yards or three yards for second and seven situation for Kimberly. Three-yard gain for Frazier. Yeah, Frazier, remember last year, the state best uh, 34 rushing touchdowns earned second team All-State honors by the Associated Press. 1,558 yards rushing for Frazier last year going again to Northern Iowa. Also had eight catches for 169 yards, two receiving scores, averaged 8.8 .8 yards per carry. Been fun watching him over the years, too. Second down and seven. Wide open again. Yeah, we're talking Malikowski, about this. Look at the, his strength, and he's got a first down, Ricardo. And while as frustrated as you know that Kimberly defense is in the rushing game, you got to think the same for what Fond du Lac is experiencing defensively in the passing game. There's got to be some frustration mounting because these are two defenses that aren't used to no. giving up what we've seen given up so far. In, in, I mean, he had no one around him on that reception, Brett. So able to just work in space there and get a first down for Kimberly. So again, alternating styles makes for a very entertaining game here. First down and 10 at the 32, 33 I should say. For Pendleton, this Frazier off the right side. Oh, watch out, here goes Caleb now on the far sideline. He's got some room. His best run of the night. Well blocked and again, Finding the open running lanes. That's in Fond du Lac territory. Ball is going to be spotted at the 47. That's where they'll mark it, right? The Cardinals 47. So 21 yard gain for Frazier. And Kimberly's offense is humming again. Both teams racking up the yards, aren't they? They absolutely are. Maybe this is another one that comes down to the last play of the game. Let's well, hope so. Brad, you know, I said on the podcast, the R&B Show podcast, that you know, I thought this was going to be a game in the 20s. I think we might get to that <laughs> by halftime. First and 10 at the 47. Pendleton. Polakowski near side. Nice play action. He's wide open. Nice catch. I shouldn't have said he's wide open. <laughs> he wasn't. That was well covered, but that was number 40, Isaac Deccan. That's just a beautiful pass. Yeah, the sophomore fullback, tight end. Well defended, but a good little ball fake uh, play action pass. Pendleton is right on the money tonight. That's a gorgeous pass, Brett. you got to throw that with touch, and that's what exactly what he did. First down and 10 at the 30, 17-yard gain for Kimberly. Hitting Isaac Deccan. Of course, his older sister, Shay Deccan. She's got to be watching tonight, right? Yeah. There's Frazier looking for some space. Let's see who uh, was the first there. That was number 41 again with that hit, Michael Towell. Pretty good hard hitting down there in the trenches. Two-yard gain for Frazier. Second down and eight from the 28 as uh, Kimberly getting near the red zone here. Trailing 21 to 14. They've scored in every one of their possessions, as has Fond du Lac. Let's do like a like a thir three overtime, 60-something to 60-something <laughs> game. Why not, right? Let's yeah, just end it. Certainly uh, trending that way. And Boy, Frazier now getting going. Now that running game is opening up some holes for the papermakers. He might have the first down. Yep, they're going to move the chains. So good run now. and Nice little mix for the papermakers, Ricardo. And getting that passing game going probably loosens up the defense a little bit. I'll tell you what, the, the, this situation for both teams is, is – it hasn't been the norm this year, obviously, because Fond du Lac has blown out just about everyone in Kimberly. Not nearly as uh, th those games haven't been as lopsided, but they've also it's rare when they're in a tight game. And for Fond du Lac, I know this is new for them. Some First, history between these programs oh yeah. as far as coaching staffs, too. We'll talk about that in a little while. Pendleton, he's going to swing Polakowski wide open. Look at this. Finally brought down. Boy, Braylon Allen, can he cover some ground or what? They're marking that inside the five. I'm trying to see where the officials are. Actually, it might be just outside. Right to the six. Is that? Actually, I might have been. I checked that. That was number 14, not number one. Caleb Nels, the sophomore. He was flying there to get Polakowski. Yeah, the ball, uh, Ricardo. At the six? Is marked at the six. So 14-yard gain for Polakowski, and, and I think Pendleton has just one incompletion. 
the entire game. And, Brett, that was a, a drop, if I remember correctly. And really reading the defense well. Frazier now, a little jump stop, trying to get around. Wall Jasper <laughs> wrapping him up. <laughs> and Braylon Allen, Allen wrapping him up. Yeah, he's trying to pull the ball away from Frazier on that one, Wall Jasper. Looks like stop for no gain. Second and goal at the six coming up. Good offensive game plan by Kimberly, though, Brett. They're keeping it even. You know, they're keeping it balanced. Well, you got to keep that defense honest. You, you know, you don't want them uh, plugging up uh, the running game. And now, as I said a little bit earlier, you can start to see it loosening up a little bit just because of uh, how in rhythm Pendleton is with his receivers in that passing attack. Here's Pendleton with Wenick near side. Very tight formation, power formation for Kimberly. Pendleton's going to keep it, and he is in for the score. Six wow. yards out. Showing some tough running by the quarterback there for the Papermakers. So with 6.30 remaining, we're all possibly all tied up again pending this extra point, Brett. So Cam Zebel's turn for the PAT. And he bangs it through. With 6.30 to go, we're again tied up 21 apiece here at Pickett Field as we look at our Festival Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. Just updating my Twitter at, at PC Ricardo. Brett's at PC Brettsy. Rosie's at Middle Rosie. Final Act head coach Steven Jorgensen. Uh, of course, he played his he played his high school football at uh, Kimberly High School. He's a paper maker. He's a, he's a Kimberly graduate. Of course, his father, Steve Jorgensen, he's on the staff. And the elder Jorgensen led Kimberly to two state titles, Division II titles, championships in 2007 and 08. Steve also guided the paper makers to the 09 Division II state championship game. They fell to Wanakee in that one. And in the elder Jorgensen, remember Oshkosh North. 21 sure. years ago now, uh, the Spartans. The, the Great team with Darren Charles. Yeah, the Division One state champs in 2000. Bob, Docker, Bob Dockerty, I want to say, and Wara, I think, was their quarterback. Yeah, they had some explosive, uh, explosive talent on that Oshkosh North team back in 2000. But uh, Steve Jorgensen, the elder Steve Jorgensen, resurrecting two programs, and now we've seen what Steve Jones has, has only added to that uh, fantastic foundation, what Steve is and his staff has done, taking, taking it to another level. I mean, I've got this stat. In their last 103 games, Kimberly now, 103 is the record. Wow. They've lost to Bayport, Muskego, and Fond du Lac during that stretch. That dates back to the 2013 season. 103. I mean, think about that. In this conference, in this part of the state, that's... Ridiculous. Nine, incredible number. Yeah, yes. 971 winning percentage. 103. Now, if you're Steven Jorgensen, Ricardo, do you, t do you tell you guys, hey, quit scoring so fast? <laughs> oh, their offense is incredibly efficient. <laughs> no doubt about that. Let's slow down here a little bit. Let's give our defense a rest. First down and 10 at the 38. Uh, they've only ran a handful of plays, but 11, I think, in the half. Here's a good look at uh, Steven Jorgensen down there. He's done a heck of a job. Steve Taken over for his father. Remember, it was Mike. Steve N. Steve N. Took yes. has taken over for Steve, but uh, was it Mike uh, Gnevok was the yes. coach at Fond du Lac before then? So Now he's at McWanago, I want to say. Wall Jasper, a little, little pitch out there. Look at this. A beautiful job by Wall Jasper. And a nice run here. Number 18, his first touch, Tyler uh, Collian. The leading receiver showing his versatility. Or Colleen, I should say. Eight-yard gain, second down and two. But he was a very patient guy, Brett. He was waiting for his blocks to kind of set up. That's that's good coaching there and good vision by Colleen. This brings up a second and two for Fond du Lac. Again, the Cardinals have just had their way rushing the football. They've been as impressive as advertised, Brett. 200-plus mm -hmm. rushing yards already. They haven't yet to attempt a pass. Uh, second down and short here. Yeah, we, we actually kind of, as I put in the spring schedule together, would, would have I wanted to see Fond du Lac a little bit earlier as Braylon Allen looking oh, for look some out. room. Watch out, Woo. dives. That was a nice tackle, actually. I think that was Ellison. Because <laughs> I think uh, Allen was biding his time, Brad. Wasn't he? Yes, yep. he was. 
But again, with with and we can talk about this a little bit. Not being able to have games at Fruith uh, made it real difficult. Uh, I'm not sure of the setup. I know Keel High School has a really nice uh, turf field. Just didn't know if they had the the live stream uh, capabilities for us. So uh, glad we can finally see uh, Fond du Lac this season. And uh, why not uh, in a big time ch uh, conference championship type game? Wall Jasper, he's going to keep it. Oh boy, look at him go. He's on his feet still. Look at this. Look at that sprinter speed. He is in from 44 yards out. Unbelievable. Back and forth this game is going, Brett. And again, Kimberly has no answer for nope. Fond du Lac's rush game, and that was a concern coming in. Wow. Boy, you see Kyle Wall Jasper. He's, he turns on those jets when he gets in the open field. Unbelievable back and forth game we have here at Pickett Field as we wait for Shebrel's PAT. And that's good. Look at the score here with 4.56 remaining here in the second quarter. 28 21. You can see Steven Jorgensen there patting his guys on the helmet. Neither offense has been stopped. They have scored touchdowns on seven offensive possessions in this game combined. Incredible. Again, I'm updating my Twitter. Follow me at PC Ricardo, Brett at PC Brettsy, Rosie at Middle Rosie. Wall Jasper now three touchdown runs, 55, 5, and 44 yards. Braylon Allen has a 66-yard run, scoring for Kimberly. Pendleton from two yards out. Caden, uh, I checked that six yards out. Caleb Frazier from two yards out. And then Pendleton to Winnick from 24 yards. The only passing touchdown so far of this game. What a game here at Pickett Field. Which defense is going to finally yes. stiffen and, and rise <laughs> to the challenge? It has been one of those games. Kimberly cannot figure out for the life of it. Fondi's amazing rush game, and you know Kimberly's kind of like methodic passing game. Uh, Fond like conversely has no answer no for, for that answer. as well. Neither defense has an answer for what the other team is doing. Wow, I expected a heck of a game. I didn't expect these types of offensive fireworks. So did you? No, like I said this, before, this I, thought, I thought this would be a game in the twenties at the at the at the final the final gun. And Brett, it looks like this is. Uh, going to be a, a tad bit more than that. Well, let's have some fun. It's fun for us. I'm sure it's not real uh, fun for Steve Jones and Steven Jorgensen. Nice kick inside the five. Wilds again. Nice little return near the 30-yard line. Four forty-nine left here in the first half. Now, Kimberly, uh, it would behoove them for to, to, to not allow Fondi another offensive position. If they can close out the half with the ball, that would be advantageous for them going into the half. Right, because then Kimberly opens the second half with the football. So you could double up here, and that's a good point. First down and 10 at the 27 for Pendleton and company. Frazier. Oh, nice little move by Look Caleb at that. Frazier. Watch out. He gets around the edge. He's got some wheels, too, in Fondy territory. And he's starting to get going. Just a joy to watch these two teams. Oh, isn't it? The best in the valley. You know, Kimberly way up here on Highway 41. And then uh, at, the, at the tip of Lake Winnebago is, is Fond du Lac down there. And just these two programs have really – made themselves one of the two of the top three or four in, in, in the state, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, Muskego obviously yes. uh, has got to be in that conversation. Back-to-back -back, uh, state champions pre-COVID. There's Frazier again. Look at this hole for Frazier in this offensive line. He's still on his feet inside the 35. Frazier's starting to warm up here. Well, and so uh, is that offensive line. Yeah. Ball's going to be marked at the 34, so a 14-yard gain for Frazier. Again, thank you all for tuning in. You're, you're watching two of the best teams in the state. We're talking 
two teams with significant star power, Division I athletes, and it doesn't get any better than this in the state, folks. First down and 10, Pendleton. There's Parker Kester. Is this his first touch? It He's is. got some wheels. Nice job just to kind of stay inside. Look at that run near the 15. Big gash. Big, big, I mean, they're really gashing both, Fond du Lac for big yards now. Both defenses are... I think Fond du Lac's defense, Ricardo, I think I think you're probably wearing out more than Kimberly's. Uh, Fond du Lac has had these explosive runs where they're not on the field very long offensively, whereas conversely, Kimberly, nice, long, sustained drives, and I think starting to wear out that uh, Fond du Lac defense a little bit here, especially in the run game, because the Fond du Lac uh, defense was doing a good job bottling up the run early on. And some significant players for Fond du Lac do play both ways. You don't have that, the case for Kimberly. First Pendleton. down to 10 at the 20. Yep, gives it to Frazier. Nice cut back inside. And maybe this is where, well, there's still plenty of time here. You're talking about trying to slow things down a little bit. At the same time, you got to play uh, keep up as well. Oh, absolutely. Nearing the 345 mark here in the first half. And your community first, Fox City's Marathon and Festival Food Scoreboard. Second down and seven. We'll call it a short seven for the papermakers. Have scored on each one of their offensive positions, as has, as has Fond du Lac, and that's why you see the 28-21 to 21 score as we near the half. Frazier near the 15. Yep. I think it's a gain of one. Looks like that was number 41, Michael Towell. Again, we've called his name quite a bit. Uh, Good-looking de defensive player for the Cardinals. That linebacker spot. So what do you think here? Ball at the 16-yard line, third down. I think this is four-down territory. Oh, I it has to be just by the way Fond du Lac's scoring. you got to keep up. Well, both teams have good kickers, so that's why I was wondering if maybe uh, Steve Jones would think about kicking a, a, P, uh, a field goal, although that would be going into the wind, wind coming kind of out of the north, and that is the north end zone. We'll see. Frazier, oh, good job. Oh, nice job by number five. Tyler Vandeslunt, Ricardo, held that edge, and he just kind of was a roadblock for Frazier. Frazier had nowhere to go and tripped up, fourth down. Yeah, no gain on that play, so Vandeslunt doing his job. Now here you go, fourth down, fourth and six, ball at the 16-yard line. Huge play here. Clock running, but plenty of time, as we've seen by this Fond du Lac offense. They don't need much. Brad Vandeslunt, you know, he, he held the line there, 5'8", 173 pounds. So a chance for the Cardinals' defense to get off the field and get that uh, explosive offense back on here in the waning moments of this first half. Let's see what the papermakers have here on this fourth and sixth play. Pendleton, he's got time. He's flushed out, swings it over. Wow! So, oh, he slipped. I think he's short. No, he's going to be close. That's no, winning. No, I think he's short. I mean, it's right at it's, he is it short. Is, it is he is short. short of the ten. He had the first, but just slipped on the turf, and he's short by about a yard. Wow! And you can hear the Fond du Lac crowd in front of us. The the Cardinals get the stop, but that looked like it had first down all over it, didn't it? It did, Brett, and uh, that's unfortunate. That's again, this is turf that Kimberly's not used to. It's it's the Appleton East Field. And the turf monster got him, Brett. Well, here, one minute 41, you would think with a long field, the ball at the 11-yard line, that might be tough. But with Braylon Allen and Kyle Wall Jasper, they don't need much time. That's a matter of Kimberly now holding the fort. If ever you needed a stop, it's now, Brett. Stop, a turnover, yeah, anything. Oh, because, you know, you also have a chance of getting the ball back. They have three timeouts. Here goes Wall Jasper. He's going to keep it and watch oh, out. Oh, goodness. Watch out. Big time blocking. And Wall Jasper in the open field in Kimberly territory. Still on his feet. Finally brought down. What a run. Just what I was talking about. They don't need much time. It's unbelievable what this offense is doing right now. Again, this is one of the top defenses in the state, Brett. And they're just ripping it to shreds. Now, Wall Jasper obviously did a lot of that himself, but there was some fantastic blocking in front of him that he just used as a little bit of a wall, got some of those defenders out of the way, and then he turned on the Jets' ball at the 33. Brett, 56-yard 56, 56 run there for Wall Jasper.
Now it's Braylon Allen's turn, and he's gone. He's gone. Two plays, two plays. That's a 33-yard touchdown run. Unbelievable. Is that 33 yards? It was 33 yards, so two plays, 89-yard drive. Yeah, I know. It, just what we were saying. They don't need any time. It's crazy. You can see Steven Jorgensen. And Shubrell bangs it through. Two plays, 89 yards. Wall Jasper and then Allen finishing it off. Allen... His second rushing touchdown of the night. He's got 66 and 33 yard scores. And with 123 remaining here in this opening half, Fond du Lac now up 35 to 21 over Kimberly as we look at our Festival Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. You, know, you look at you know, Braylon Allen, Cardo mentioned earlier, he reclassified the season as a senior, will be playing collegiately at the University of Wisconsin. I know he projects to be a safety slash linebacker for the Badgers. Any way he could reclassify back and be a junior <laughs> so, be he, so he can keep watching him? Uh, oh, he's fun to watch. Same with Wall Jasper, incredible. Uh, Allen, I, I know you should check out his Twitter account. Everybody uh, out there, just Google his name, uh, Braylon Allen. B-R-A-E-L-O-N-A-L-L-E-N. -L -L -E -L -L -E Look at his Twitter account. He posted a video of himself in November on Twitter doing a 405-pound hang clean. I know you can do that, Ricardo. Yeah, right. Four-star recruit also has a video of himself squatting 455 pounds five times. Heck of an athlete. And that's Frazier now looking for some space. And let's see if Kimberly can put a score on the board here before halftime. Uh, down 14 points, a minute 12 to play. All three timeouts remaining. Oh, you're asking a lot. You know, I mean, the offense has to basically keep up with uh, Fond du Lac's offense, which is you know, sooner or later you're going to have to, the Kimberly defense is going to have to come up and, and stop the Fondy juggernaut. Fondy, five offensive possessions, five touchdowns. The Braylon Allen 66-yarder uh, in the first quarter, that was a one-play 66-yard run. And then his 33-yard run caps a two-play 89-yard drive. Looking for a screen. And Winnick hit hard. Was that Braylon Allen it knocking was. Winnick down? And it looks like Kimberly's going to burn a timeout. See why those Badger fans are very excited for Braylon Allen to hit uh, hit campus. Allen, a really good uh, track athlete too, is, is he not? Uh, I seem to remember that he did some good things for the mm -hmm. Cardinals, but I don't think he's going to run track this spring. I I don't believe he is as well. So let's see, ball's placed at the 42, nine yard gain. So second and one for Kimberly. Brett, they do have some time here. Do the papermakers remember the ball uh, or, or the clock? I should say stops after each first down in the high school level. Two timeouts still remaining for Steve Jones. Tons of offense in this game. Fond du Lac finally gets the first stop of the game on the Kimberly's previous possession. Good job by Winnick to hold on to that ball after taking that lick by Allen as well. So second and short for Fond du Lac. Three receivers set. Frazier in the backfield. And Frazier with a big run around oh, nice the edge. Move. Wow, great move by Frazier. And finally brought down by Allen. I <laughs> two premier athletes going at it right there. First of all, what a move, like you said, Ricardo, to kick it outside by Frazier. But then Allen was in on that initially and then still caught up to Frazier right. down the field. Allen actually got he, – he got – you know, the, the, the ankle's broken a little bit, but was able to recover and get that tackle. Ball's inside the 40. Ball will be placed at the 36. Wow. 
So 22-yard gain for Frazier. And, you know, like I said, Kimberly has plenty of time. Plenty of time. 50.4 50 point, 50 seconds left. Two timeouts. Even to get into field goal range, the wind has kind of settled down here a little bit as the night has uh, progressed. But, you know, Steve Jones, he's aggressive, and he's thinking six points. Let's get into the half and, and make this a one-score game. And remember, folks, uh, Kimberly opens the second half with the football. Pendleton, plenty of time. Downfield to Polakowski with the catch. What a catch by Polakowski. In traffic over the middle of the field. Yeah, ball be placed at the seven. 29-yard pass play, Brett. And again, we talked about this. And quickly up to the line scrimmage is Pendleton with three receivers. And I think Fond du Lac wants to call time. Let's see. Yep, the Cardinals burning a timeout. Boy, what a catch. Uh, well, no, what a throw and what, what a timing route. And uh, the, everything's working pretty well in terms of the passing game for Kimberly. Really, the only misstep was the misstep, was the slip on the turf well, on the previous drive that stalled it, uh, you know, inside, I want to say, or near the 10-yard line, which then Fondi converted to the, the, the touchdown drive on the ensuing possession. Everything working for that passing of that offensive line, giving Pendleton plenty of time. But Polakowski having himself a game in the passing department. We've seen Winnick with uh, a catch, Deccan with a, a, a tough catch uh, on that far boundary uh, into traffic. But that was a really good concentration to hold on to that football with a couple of defenders right on him. And Pendleton putting the ball, again, Ricardo, right on the spot. So first and goal at the seven coming up for the Papermakers after that Fond du Lac timeout, 36.2 seconds to go. For as much as Fond du Lac has, has been piling up on the Rushing side, Kimberly with the answer in the passing game. Although Frazier's really getting going in the running game. And look at this, Caleb Frazier looking for an angle. He's in. He is in from seven yards out. And he beat Braylon Allen to the corner. Unreal game, folks. This is crazy. This is uh, my, this is going to go down as another classic, Brett, between these two teams. Looking, uh, waiting for Zeebel's, uh PAT, but back and forth, back and forth. What a game here at Pickett Field. Zeebel's kick easily splits the uprights, and with 30.5 seconds to play, as we look at our. Festival Foods and Community First Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard showing the Cardinals on top of the papermakers, 35-28. to 28. So the good news, Ricardo, Kimberly scored a touchdown. The bad news, there's plenty of time for this Fond du Lac offense. That is. 30.5 seconds <laughs> to go is, is not a big deal. Time, right. Again, I'm updating my Twitter. You can follow me at PC Ricardo. Follow Brett at PC Brettsy and Rosie at Middle Rosie. Ricardo, I can't wait for you to add up the uh Oh, man, it might take me all half. This is nuts. Again, thanks to everybody checking us out tonight. Don't forget, folks, uh, if you're not a subscriber to the Post Crescent, Fond du Lac Reporter, the Green Bay Press Gazette, Oshkosh Northwestern, any of our USA Today Network Wisconsin websites, you can do so. A great subscription deal. Six months, one dollar. Gets you all the benefits included with the digital subscription. Please, folks, help play a role in supporting local journalism, including our live streams that you and your community can trust. Learn more details. Sign up right now for a digital subscription. Postcrescent.com slash subscribe, FDLreporter.com slash subscribe, Green Bay Press Gazette.com slash subscribe, and the Northwestern.com slash subscribe. Again, six months, one dollar. Ricardo, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. Ball will be picked up right at the 15 by MacArthur. Oh, almost uh, stripped. Uh, that was a pretty good effort there by number 47, Mason Stepanski. Trying to force that turnover, but here we go. 26.3 seconds to go. You kind of think this is how we're going to go in the half, but Ricardo 
it would not surprise me with the way this game is going if Fond du Lac puts another six points on the board here. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> well, I mean, Kimberly's defense, if you want to make a stand, if you're the coach, please do it now, is what he's telling his kids. Yeah, absolutely. Because if you're down only a touchdown, you get the ball back in the second half, you have to feel pretty good about yourself as Kimberly takes that timeout. So second timeout burned by the papermakers. Got a tweet from uh, our friend Jeff wants to know, uh, do we know what the scoring record is? I don't know. That's a great question. Maybe the state scoring record uh, combined oh, I don't, yardage I don't. could be on the line tonight. Yardage record, possibly, but I don't, I don't think the scoring, because I know just last week, Menasha beat Eau Claire Memorial like 50-something to 30-something. So Well, that's going to be more than that. Uh, the way this is going tonight. But it'll be close, but that wasn't nowhere near the, the scoring record, okay. though. You can, I think you could find that on the Wisconsin uh, Football Coaches Association website. I think they have a history section. And uh, maybe Jeff give me an assignment here at halftime. And help us out. <laughs> <Good enough. laughs> we, we, we need all the, uh, the, the, the correspondence uh, at our disposal here to help us out. Maybe, help maybe, us. maybe there is a scoring and yardage record uh, at stake here tonight, statewide stuff. So here we go. First and ten for... The Cardinals, and as crazy They're as passing. it is, like the first time for Wall Jasper over the middle, a little high for David MacArthur. Kind of surprised. That was a, a play, Ricardo. That you know, in the middle of the field, ball off the fingertips, a little bit of a high throw. That could have gone into the hands of a guy like a Tommy Ellison, the cornerback turned safety for the Papermakers. We've seen him come up with a, a few interceptions here uh, this season. And now Kimberly going to burn its final timeout of the half. Let me rattle off. Brett, I, I want to give some kudos to the Fond du Lac offensive lineman who I have here. Number 61, Levi Liedke, 6'3", 250 pounds. Number 55, Samuel Wood, 6'200 pounds. Number 76, where is he here? Christian Granado, 6'238 pounder. And uh, number 65, Carter King, six foot one, two hundred twenty, and number 71, Braden Bolt, six foot two hundred sixty-two pounds. So I mean, a, a stout offensive line, but they're by no means behemoths or anything like that. Speed, speed, leverage, whatever they're doing, it's working when it comes to the Fondy uh, run game. Second down and ten, in the 33, 22.2 seconds left. Surprised that they attempted a pass there. Um. With his, with his how explosive it <laughs> as Wall Jasper and Allen have been in this running game? That's a good question, Brett. I, it, maybe he saw something on film in, in, that, in that alignment, I'm guessing. But Watch out. No, he's going to pass it oh, again. Wall Allen. Jasper. I see, I see where he wants to go to Allen. Slinging it. Nope. Underneath, he's going to go instead. And uh, trying to keep him in bounds. Good job by that Kimberly defense. That was number 18, Tyler Colleen. And uh, third down now coming up, and now Fond du Lac wants to take a timeout. Well, I thought I saw. Well, I did see Braylon Allen. They, uh, I think they initially wanted to throw to him, and then he, uh, underneath, he was able to hit number 18, Colleen, who was their big play receiver, actually. But uh, looked like Braylon Allen was running a fly. I don't know if that was a wheel route. Well, it's third down coming up, ball at the 41 yard line, and as crazy as it sounds, with 11.1 seconds to go, this is still. A very possible rushing down. Yes, um, because anything, they, they they can break these exactly. Anything is in the playbook right now for Fondy. They're so efficient and a 59-yard touchdown run at this point would wouldn't surprise me. Mike Cruz was asking why the game is at Appleton East. Brett, uh, we don't. I, I don't know the exact reason. Uh, just Kimberly has had four home games. Fond du Lac had three coming in, and I, I think that Fond du Lac maybe just wanted to have uh, a, a home game, so to speak, and maybe not have that game at, at, at Kimberly. Maybe they wanted it more yeah. at, at a neutral site. Fond du Lac has had to play all of its home games on the road, uh, the previous games at Kiel. So Fond du Lac, the home game in this one, Wall Jasper, all sorts of time, and that Kimberly defense doing a great job and coverage downfield. So fourth down with 2.7 seconds to go, and you got to think, the Cardinals are going to punt it away. Might be the only time they're, they've punted to, uh, this game. Or, boy, if I was Stephen Jorgensen, I would I, I would go for it. Just I would, run I would, it. I would, yeah, run it and see if you can catch me. 
the 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 Kimberly defense has not been able to stop. That's why I'm a little surprised with 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 how much they've gashed uh, the Kimberly defense so far that they went to th to the air three times in a row. So Fond du Lac now burns its final timeout to talk things over, and I'm sure uh, Stephen Jorgensen, as you can see right there, is saying, "Guys, this is what we're going to do: secure the football. Nothing crazy here." And oh man, this is this is just. Uh, it's, and I know we've been going, going through a pandemic and everything. It's just unfortunate that this game isn't in a conventional season, in a state semifinal or At something Titan like Stadium. that. Titan Stadium. Titan Stadium or something. I mean, uh, we're not going to see, you know, you're thinking about Frazier's is graduating, Braylon Allen, Wall Jasper. Just think of the great athletes that are graduating. We're not going to be able to see them. In my opinion, either one of these teams would have had a shot at winning a state title. You know, we all know Muskego is on that win streak, and they're yeah. very, very good. I would say those three teams probably have as good a shot at anybody at winning the state title. We could be seeing potentially one of the state champions right here on the field in a conventional well, season. At least let, let's do the glasses half full and say, hey, at least we, we are seeing this game, even if it's on May 7th, you know, a chance to entertain us one last time. And uh, now Wall Jasper, now watch out. Watch out because he gets going, finally <laughs> brought down, but you, you kind of <laughs> hold your you, breath. You do. I think that was number 46 for the paper makers. Damon Loker, the senior linebacker, bringing down Wall Jasper on the final play of the first half. But you, you, if you're a paper maker fan, you're kind of watching that and you're like, oh boy. All right, Brett, let me see if I can add oh, up you these do stats. that. I'm try to do what I can. You do that. But, uh, folks, it's halftime here at Pickett Field. And uh, a quick look at our festival foods and community first Fox Cities Marathon. Scoreboard shows the Cardinals leading the Papermakers, 35-28. to 28. We'll talk more about tonight's game and, uh, of course, what we have coming up digitally at USA Today Network Wisconsin right after this short break. If you've been looking forward to the sounds of fans cheering and the excitement of an event that brings the community together, then secure your place to be with us by registering to join the 30th running of the Community First Fox Cities Marathon Weekend of Events. Presented by Myron Construction, there'll be a safe race for every pace. Participation is limited for this year's events, so you'll want to lock in your spot soon to make sure you're celebrating at the finish line with us. Go to foxcitiesmarathon.org. Welcome back to Pickett Field here on the campus of Appleton East High School. Again, once again, a big thank you to our sponsors for their support of us and high school sports. First, Festival Foods. The folks at Festival Foods know that getting involved and doing good is part of being a good neighbor and member of our community, and they strive to be a true asset to our communities and embody the Give Back Spirit of Wisconsin and the Community First Fox Cities Marathon. Registration now open. For the 30th running of the marathon, visit foxcitiesmarathon.org for details. Jeff uh, uh, tweets back at Ricardo. He says, usually he's the one giving out the homework. Jeff, do your homework for us tonight. <laughs> Actually, uh, Oshkosh Herald Sports, i got to see uh, scoring record. Oh, there we go. Thank you. 84-82 uh, uh, was the record between Oconomowoc and Wisconsin Lutheran. Uh, so thanks to Oshkosh. What was that one again? 84-82. Oconomowoc and Wisconsin Lutheran. That was actually written by our, our friend J.R. Radcliffe of the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. That was back in December of 2017. He wrote that article. J.R. does such a great job. One of our USA Today Network Wisconsin colleagues. So there you go. I don't know if we're going to get to that point, but we might. Well, I have uh, unofficially for Fond du Lac 372 yards rushing. 372 yes. yards rushing this half. I believe it. I guess I do believe it. And I'm going to add up Kimberly's passing yardage, which is almost just as impressive. Did you hear that, Rosie? 372 yards of rushing for the Cardinals this half. <laughs> I should really add that up again because you know me and Matt, Brett. Well, yeah, you can't. You, one, one plus one, you, I think you, don't, you have a hard time with, yes, right? Yes, I do. It's, 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 that's three, right? When, um, when we're doing our Clubhouse Live show, and while you're doing that, I'll talk about Clubhouse Live, but when, we, when you're doing that, you can't even keep track of uh, the what? games we play and the point totals. Brett, so. I, I'm getting better. I got my flashcards. See, hey, we got a friend here in the booth. Now nah, he's too busy. He's too busy. He's trying to adding one plus one plus one plus sixty six plus forty five plus eighty three plus seventy eight. Yeah, we're live. 
It's our guy. Yep. Jarrell Russian. He's leaving us. He is, man. And uh, he's getting out of the ice box. And and, and, and Rosie, make sure you get a ca get him on film when we're when, when he goes back outside. He's trying to catch uh, get a little bit warmer uh, situation right here. But man, we appreciate you so much, man. We wish you the best of luck, Jarrell. Jarrell Russian covers Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, the Northwestern, and the Fond du Lac reported a great job. And uh, we, we we know you're heading back closer to home, my friend. And we're happy to see that. But we're 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 a little little hurt because we know that we're going to miss you and. Um, you know, it's going to be tough trying to trying to pick up the slack with you gone, my friend. But we're going to do We're going to try our best. I'll miss y'all too. <laughs> That's Jarrell Russian. Uh, in what do you think about your Fondy boys, huh? They're looking good. This, the is, this is what they've done every game. Yeah. Every game, Wall Jasper looked like he, he may be down and in the back, but he just breaks out out of He's nowhere. How'd they get so big? Uh, Jarrell's talking about this is how what Fondy's been doing all year. Uh, but how do you get so big? I mean, I, yeah, I we all knew. I, I tell you, what, I want to give the headset to okay. Darrell. Yeah, why don't, why don't you, you do talk that? to Ricardo? You want to wear the headset a little bit? Hey, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm good. Yeah, you're good. He's good. So here, you can talk since uh, Jarrell covers Fond du Lac. Yeah, we'll, we'll get Jarrell. This is Jarrell Russian, by the way, uh, the Fond du Lac reporter and Oshkosh Northwestern beat guy, and he has been um, doing a great job the last two years plus, right, covering uh, Oshkosh Fond du Lac area, and he covers Fond du Lac specifically, but. Are you surprised? Uh, no, I don't think you're surprised at all at what you're seeing, Not right, from Fond du Lac. Let's get this by you there. Go ahead. Not surprised at all. This is this is this is Fond du Lac. They they showed this 2019, and now it's just a a better version of it this year. I'm look. I knew they were going to run the ball. I'm shocked at how explosive they've been because we've seen Kimberly's defense this whole season, and Kimberly's defense has shut down some pretty good offenses. But to see them get gashed up. Has that even surprised you at all? You yes. you kind of expected this. Well, I expected Fond du Lac to, to do this. I mean, no one's come close to stopping them at all. Right. Probably similar to what Kimberly's had. But I've never seen anyone move the ball on Fond du Lac like right. this either. Nina didn't. Um, it took them much longer to get down the field, even though it's taking Kimberly some plays too. Yeah, right. It, Nina, it took them forever to get down the field. Has that been something that you've seen, though? Have they struggled against a passing game? Because a lot of these routes – are we kind of wide open? You know, I'm not sure if they've even really had to play teams that have that kind of pass game as Kimberly. Nina dumped the ball off a lot, okay. but they didn't pass down the field as much as as much as Kimberly is today. Right. But I don't think they've seen a, a passing game like this before with the receivers and the QB. One thing I want to ask you, Braylon Allen. Now, we are watching a future Badger and one of the guys who we really feel maybe has a shot to make it in a couple, a couple levels higher, yep. if you know what I mean. Um, what do you, what do you, what's your take on him? First off, his is the weight gain and the, and I mean that in a good way. He's he's kind of, he's gone from basically like a corner, defensive back. He could play. It looks like linebacker and maybe even defensive end. I was about to say at the collegiate DN, level, right? DN. DN. Uh, how 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 committed is he, and how has he really taken it upon himself to improve himself that much? He's real committed. Uh, from his freshman year, he, he's he's gotten so much bigger just consistently. It's not. It's just been so steady. It's not yep. like. He did it all the last year. No, he was he was huge in 2019 too. I think he can. I think he can go however far as he wants to take it. Honestly, and his future his future is bright. Well, you're gonna see some great athletes down in where you're going to Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa. So, uh, we appreciate you, man. The last couple of years and what all you've done for us, man. You've been great, and uh, I'm happy for you because I know you want to get back down to the south. You don't have to worry about this <laughs> this anymore, man. This May and it's nah, like 40. It's like what th high 30s right now, actually. If you think about it, and it's May, man. But uh, I sent off the right way with the cold weather. But I appreciate y'all's help. Wouldn't have been wouldn't have, wouldn't have been able to do it without you guys at all. Get me adjusted up here up to speed. All right, man. Hey, man, keep in touch with all of us. Again, if you don't follow him, follow him anyway. Jarrell Russian. What, what's your Twitter account? Go ahead and give it out, my friend. Twitter is Jarrell Russian underscore. That's J-E-R-E-L-L-R-U-S-H-I-N underscore right That's there. That's right. He is here for one more week before he's taken off and uh, going to do some great things at Tuscaloosa because I know you did some great things for us. Appreciate Thank you that. again, Jarrell Russian. If you want to get Brett back here, let him get back to work here. He's been slacking now a little bit behind you. But uh, thank you, Jarrell, uh, for coming up here and, and saying hi. And, boy, it's got to be much better weather now in uh, one of, one of the many Tuscaloosa one right now. One of the many things about COVID that sucks is, I didn't, you know, we used to stop by the office, Jarrell. Now yeah. I haven't seen. So when he came in here, he had his, uh, his face mask on. I was like, I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, you're <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, that's Jarrell. <laughs> okay. okay. All you can see is uh, the eyes nowadays. So, uh, yeah, he, fantastic job on the Bob Hyland stuff. Yes. And then the Oshkosh West oral history and the basketball team. 
really enjoyed those. Uh, and those I stories. never told you the story about Bob Hyland. He asked me to g jump in the hot tub with him <laughs> well, many years ago. He was having he was having a, a grill out or something like that. I remember calling him about something. He said, "Hey, I have some steaks on the grill. Why don't you come over and jump in the hot tub?" I'm like, "Coach, I'm at work right now." <laughs> But uh, he, 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 got, he got mad at me. At he the, got at mad the, at, the at you too. Show because I was repeating stats that were given to me. I think he was ready to do the Oklahoma drill right I on know, stage. I know he was. Me. He was ready to take me down. He Highland, take we me love down. Highland. I'm sure you'll remember Bob Highland when you go down to Tuscaloosa. But man, that guy is just. Uh, he's a. What was that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh uh, well, I, that, that would wouldn't have looked good, you know, reporter kind of schmoozing with the with the coach. But well, just uh, say hi to I wanted the stick. Say hi to Nick Saban for us, by the way. Yeah, no there. doubt, man. Yeah, uh, it, not too long. It's gonna be a Badger. Uh, Alabama has a series coming up. I think in, about, yeah, 2024, 25. I think back to back, something like that. So man, you're, you're going down to some some good football, man. And it's unbelievable. It's real. I believe it, but man, it's just. <laughs> well, you're from Georgia originally, though, right? Yeah, so he's got that. He's in the SEC country. So and by the know. way, uh, the Bears, thank you for uh, Mr. Uh, Fields from is it Kennesaw? Kennesaw, Georgia. Yeah, is that, is that right outside Atlanta? Or where? Right up the road, uh, I just haven't found it. What, 40 miles. Okay. What about the Packers uh, cornerback, though? The Packers. Uh, Stokes. 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 The Georgia Stokes. kid. But he's a bulldog. But, so. look, but this is my point. <laughs> Jarrell's heading down to a hotbed of yeah, football, man. I, that's, I'm very jealous of you for that, man. Seeing some great ball, man. I cannot wait. Yeah, he's going to be. He'll, Jarrell he'll just saying like he can't wait. Just watch out for all those tornadoes. Yeah. Because there are a lot of them down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially Tuscaloosa. Tuscaloosa, yes. But that's great stuff. Brett, are we going to run down something? Yeah, so good. So great Thank to you, man. Thank you, Jarrell. All right, good luck to you. And then, uh, yeah, so what do you want to talk about? Something? Well, you, you, do you have well, the stats uh, Well, we up talked here? about 372 yards I have unofficially for Fond du Lac. And I'm adding up the total yards for Kimberly. It's, it's pretty close, actually, when you think about it. Just in the first quarter alone, they had, had 144. And what am I adding up here? So let's see, 144. You, you start talking, Brad. Okay, no well, I'll talk about while you're at <laughs> I'm just waiting for you, but uh, Clubhouse Live. Uh, our Packers show uh, that uh, season uh, 13 will kick off in August. Looking forward to hopefully being back in person at the Clubhouse Sports Pub and Grill inside the uh, Paper Valley Hotel, downtown Appleton. Uh, Alan Lazar, the Packers wide receiver, was our co-host this past season. We did it uh, virtually. And the Lizard King, as he likes to go by, he brought us a lot of great guests, including Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. A lot of uh, two-for-one type deals, a lot of two guests for one night type stuff. Remember, we had Adrian Amos and Dar Dar Darnell Savage. We had Kevin King and Jair Alexander. So hoping to, that we can get everybody back in person where we belong and look for more details on Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. But uh, we'll start planning uh, well, for season number 13 here uh, very <laughs> shortly. But will we have Aaron Rodgers back on the show? That's the big question. Uh, that's a great question, actually. Brett, talked about 372 yards rushing for Fond du Lac. Well, Kimberly, they have 360 yards of total offense. So they've been doing it mostly through the so air. it's about even. It's about even. So neither defense has no. been slowing down the other, though the critical fourth down stop by Fond du Lac has been the deciding factor so far in the score. But Brett. that was also a big stop by this Kimberly defense yes. there at the end of the half. Now Fond du Lac went to the air three straight times but got off the field, and now you're right, start the second half with the football. They've only been stopped once, and that was, like you mentioned, the turf monster was the biggest culprit there. So... I guess it seems like Fond du Lac, maybe because they've had such explosive uh, runs, it, it just seems like it's, it's more lopsided than uh, what it is. But that you got to give the papermakers a ton of credit. They haven't flinched. No. They've answered every single time except for that one drive. And uh, Caden Pendleton and that passing game have been outstanding, and that is what allowed the Kimberly running attack and Caleb Frazier really to get going because it loosened up Fond du Lac. They just <coughs> excuse me, they started wearing Fond du Lac down because – those were more methodical drives, drives that took some time off the clock, longer drives, and uh, a really good mix by the papermakers offensively, and it's been nothing but uh, a fireworks show when it comes to offense here in this first half. Incredible yeah. display of offense in two teams that uh, Ricardo almost even in total yardage. Yeah, I have uh, eight carries, and this is just unofficial again for Wall Jasper, eight carries for 189 yards rushing. And Braylon Allen is having himself a night, too. I'll, I'll see if I can add that up real quick as well. But, boy, oh, boy, we're watching some fantastic athletes. I mean, it's just incredible to watch these two operate. Braylon Allen and Walt Jasper. Are, you know, and on the other side as well, Pendleton, how good is he at He's quarterback? Been I mean, he has been and almost pinpoint. Yeah, Polakowski, Frazier, big time catches. came on late. Uh, 
Winnick Deccant with a with a nice grab. So the stars are out tonight. Well, I'll tell you this much: Braylon Allen's first. <coughs> we had he had back-to-back -back carries of 66 and 53 yards. So I mean, he's really been doing a great job as well. You Let's know, see if I can uh, add this well, up. Was Braylon Allen one of your elite 11? No, or because he, he was he a junior. He reclassified that. Yes. Yeah, that's too bad. He he would have been definitely one of my top uh, elite 11 he, he, athletes. He missed Wal out. Wal Jasper was. Um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate I wasn't able to give him maybe a little bit more of a digital showcase. But well, I tell you that's what, what happened. Some of these players here tonight will be, uh, I'm sure, recognized as part of our Northeast Wisconsin High School Sports yes. Award show. Planning well underway for that. It's going to be an all-virtual show again this season. Uh, it'll air uh, June 30th on all of our... USA Today Network Wisconsin websites, including the Post Crescent and uh, the Press Gazette, the Northwestern, uh, Fond du Lac Reporter. We'll put it on all the Facebook pages, I believe, as well. And our USA Today Network Wisconsin YouTube channel. But we've already uh, announced our winter nominees, and very shortly we'll announce uh, the now fall season will be completed here. And we can finally get all those nominees out as well. But to kind of doing a little bit more of an expanded a uh, roster of, of teams this year, and I th believe football will have 24 nominees, well, including Brett, a player of the year. We talked about Walt Esper having 189 yards for on eight carries. Well, Braylon Allen, he, is, he isn't matching them. Seven carries, only 168 yards. That's it? Unofficially, yes. Okay, that's it. So That's incredible. I tell you what, though, uh, again, fall, uh, fall nominees soon to be announced when it comes to the Northeast Wisconsin High School Sports Award Show. And then we got to do a quick turnaround and get the spring nominees out. Along with our premier nominees this year, we've got Boys Athlete of the Year, Girls Athlete of the Year, Team of the Year, that's uh, both genders, and Coach of the Year is both genders, and also our Courage Award winner. So looking forward, Ricardo, to a fun show, but more looking forward to 2022 when you and I can get back to yes. the Campbell Field Atrium. We I can can't start doing wait. live shows again. That is what I am waiting for as well. Good call. Yeah, well, when things got, when, when planning was underway back, you know, last summer slash early fall, they, they had to make the call to do a virtual show. We just didn't know where we would be with uh, with COVID and everything like that. And let's hope that things uh, continue to progress favorably when it comes to the COVID-19 situation. We'll kick off uh, the fall season, high school-wise, uh, with a regular schedule. Hey, Mark Lowry saying, great half so far. Thanks for streaming the game. Going Kimberly. Again, if you want a shout-out, send me uh, uh, something on Twitter, at PC Ricardo, and I'll try to get it out there as fast as I could. Hey, Jake O'Kane. Big 12 football rocks. Thank you for checking in. And as we're ready for the second half, I'm going to tweet that out. By the way, follow me at PC Ricardo, Brett at PC Brettsy, Rosie at Metal Rosie. I'm, I'm going to tweet out those two offensive numbers, Brett. I mean, the, the total yardage numbers, 372. And then what did I have for Kimberly here? I have to double check that. But, man, oh, man. This is uh, one of those games, Brett, that – Maybe something like the missed fourth down play. That those are things going to have uh, I still are going to affect the outcome. I still think a turnover will ultimately decide this game. Both teams really playing clean football. No turnovers. Uh, knock on wood, but was there a penalty? I don't think there was a single penalty that half. No, I don't think there was. So let's hope I didn't jinx it. And we have another clean half of football coming up. By the way, as Ricardo's uh, tweeting out uh, first half totals of this game. Be sure to uh, where you can go to Google, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play to find yes. uh, the R&B show. That's our podcast, uh, me and Ricardo. Actually, Jim Rosendick is part of that as well, at Metal Rosie. We talk we talk a lot about prep stuff, but we kind of venture into the yes. professional sports or even uh, some weird tangents, but we did talk about the Aaron Rodgers situation and what, what's going to happen. I think he'll end up in Green Bay now. Of course, tomorrow I'll think he's gone. It and seems, to day change, seems to change every my, day. My mind keeps changing every day, too. I don't know. But uh, today I feel like you'll be back under center for the Packers. I'll tell you this much. It is entertaining to watch. My yeah, and you as a Bear fan. As a Bears fan. That's what you're hoping he's gone. Best chance to win a Super Bowl is where he's at in Green Bay. I don't disagree with you. Front I, office I, just I, needs I, to make I some concur. concessions. They just need to make some concessions for him I a little bit. I concur wholeheartedly. But it's not about that sometimes. Logic, sometimes when there's feelings involved, Brett, don't seem to matter. Well, as someone who likes to hold grudges, I, I do understand that <laughs> you know, from time to time. I'm glad. I'm see, That's the <laughs> first step in the right direction for you, <laughs> Brett. Admi admit it? <laughs> yes. But we're getting ready for a big second half again. 372 yards of total offense for Fond du Lac. All of that on the ground. 
Kimberly a little bit more of a balance, but they have 360 yards of total offense, so lots of offense, lots of touchdowns, and uh, Kimberly starts the second half with the football. When is uh, when is Jarrell's last day? Uh, I, uh, boy, I know it's next week, so I don't know whatever day he chooses, Friday or Saturday, but uh, I, it's really unfortunate. I, I don't want to send this out, you know, and Jarrell knows, I think, highly of him, but uh, I was hoping that maybe he and I could you become more of a... Of, of a presence in the valley we haven't didn't really get the chance because of covid yeah. um but yeah it's unfortunate but uh, i wish him all the best of luck he's a hard worker and he's a kid i know do great things over there at tuscaloosa and i i'm just again i'm jealous because he's gonna see some great football down there i mean will not that we don't have great football here but will he be covering the high school scene down there yes yeah. i'm doing some college recruiting kind of stuff okay. kind of following good along that him. good for him i know that's something he loves to do and uh good luck to him and warmer weather for him as well yeah, uh, what I don't. Mother, Mother Nature did play nice th this spring for the most part, but not keeping it uh, real warm this this la uh, latest stretch. I think next uh, next week. Watch oh, out! Right onside out. kick, and Fondy got it. A little taste of what Kimberly likes to do. What a surprise! And you can see Steven Jorgensen. He's pumped about that. Fondelac recovers the onside kick to start the second half. Great, Big moment. Yeah, great special teams play. Caught Kimberly napping a little bit. And, you know, if you're fond of you're like, you know, the last thing I want to do is give Kimberly the ball and watch them uh, pass it all the way down the field. Now you get a chance to go up two scores because that run game by Fond du Lac has been absolutely unstoppable. Wow, that is a, a, a potential big turning point right there because you're right. I way Kimberly was humming on offense, you just kind of sort of expect touchdowns now the way this game has gone and a chance for the Cardinals to open now the second half with the football after recovering that onside kick. Doing a little bit of what Kimberly we've seen uh, do against opponents. And finally, that Kimberly defense swarms Braylon Allen and is going to bring down the future Badger for maybe uh, a one-yard gain at best. I don't think so. No think gain. Loss, loss of one. one yard. Allen with eight carries for 167 yards now. Second down 11 at the 48. Let's see if Kimberly's defense can rise to the challenge. Now, you know, it's this. if they can hold him out of the end zone, then... Uh, that's a big momentum swing back to Kimberly. Well, we'll see how this uh, plays out. But, uh, again, you can see you know, mere images of e each other sometimes when you look at these two programs. That's ex exactly something Kimberly would do in, in with that onside kick to start the second half. Second and 11 for Wall Jasper. He's going to the air. Downfield and just. Oh, just overthrown. Brett, he had him over. Yeah, that was Lewis Wagner Lang, the first time we've called him. Number 10, a senior wideout for the Cardinals. 6'3, 185, and now third and 11 coming well, up. I'll tell you what, good play call. You know, and uh, Fond du Lac has yet to complete a pass, but that was a good play call. They had the matchup that they wanted, just a bit overthrown. Timing just a little off on that. What do you do here? Do you go back to the air? I. Uh, <laughs> I would stick to the ground. I would stick to the ground game, and I'll tell you what, because they've been getting it at a big uh, yards per carry, really in favor of Fond du Lac here in terms of getting that first down at least. Wall Jasper waiting for the snap. He is going to hand off Braylon Allen, and he's got more than enough room. Ricardo, he's in the end zone, 47 yards out. Well, what did we say? Their run game is so potent. And that uh, special teams play by Fond du Lac has given the Cardinals, uh, pending the extra point, a two-touchdown lead. I know I say it a lot, but wow. And that was a uh, third down and long situation, Brett, that Fond du Lac converted into a score. Stick with what's working, right? Absolutely. And they have done that all game long. I'll kind of go down uh, what we've seen touchdown-wise. Chevrolet's point after is through and as we look at our community first fox city's marathon festival food scoreboard the cardinals back up by two scores 42 to 28 with 11 minutes even remaining here in this third quarter so touchdowns tonight kyle wall jasper 55 yard run braylon allen a 66 yard run wall jasper a five yard run then a 44-yard run. Braylon Allen, a 33-yard run. And now Allen again with a 47-yard run. All six touchdowns for the Cardinals on the ground. Third, that was a third and 11? Mm-hmm. Incredible. So 
Wall Jasper with three touchdowns on the ground. Now Braylon Allen with three touchdowns on the ground. And what a gut punch for that Kimberly defense because uh, they had Fond du Lac kind of where they wanted him, a third and long situation. Nine carries, 214 yards for Braylon Allen. Colin Oberman with the return. So the bad news is you give up a score, you've given up 42 points. I guess the good news is if you're Steve Jones and that Kimberly coaching staff, you tell you guys we're only down two scores right. and our offense has been working. No, no need to panic if you're Kimberly. Anything, you know, there could be a turnover here or there. Lots of time. You're just starting the second half. But what a momentum shift, though, for Fonda. Like, now it's up to Kimberly. They've been in this situation. They haven't really been in this situation before, but they've been in a lot of close games over the last couple of years, specifically against this team. We'll see how they uh, handle this challenge. First well, and 10 at the 32. Kimberly's... Uh been really doing well here. Look at uh, Caleb Frazier. Oh, almost lost the football, it looked like, but he holds on to it first down. And I was just going to say the mix of pass and run, but this running game has really kicked into gear for Kimberly. And Caleb Frazier having himself a heck of a night as well. Ball's going to be marked at the 46-yard line. Big yep. push from that offensive line, and yeah. you saw how he attacked that running lane. Gain of 14 yards for Frazier. Kimberly near the midfield mark. Two receivers set. Polakowski in motion now. And Frazier there's our again, first boy. penalty. And that's going to come back, though, Brett. We'll see what. The I don't see a flag, oh, Ricardo. Oh, I, I did. I thought I saw a flag. No, I think you. It looked like the, the final act coaching staff was pointing down that way, but. I did not see a flag. Well, now they're the officials talking are now. talking. What's going on here? And they're going to move it back. Uh, so where is the flag, though? It's a uh, illegal motion, or false start, I should say. And that is the first penalty of the game, Brett. Didn't see the flag on the field, though. I was looking I saw it for it. I saw it thrown. I don't know if they picked it up right away, but so I did see it thrown. That explains why I saw Steven Jorgensen kind of pointing that way. And uh, That's too bad because that was a well-blocked play, and Frazier ran for a nice gain there. Well, maybe you, you keep now the ball on the ground because uh, this is really working, and everything is at the Kimberly's disposal right now because they're clicking offensively as well. So first down and 15 for Kimberly after the false start. They're at their own 41-yard line. Down two scores. Trying to keep up with that Fondy rush machine. And there goes Frazier again on first and 15, looking for some space. Finally brought down. Looks like number 44 and 14 combining on that. 14 is Caleb Nels, and 44 is Keegan Henschel. By the way, folks, uh, be sure to check out postcrescent.com and fdlreporter.com later tonight. We've got not one but two photojournalists here tonight. Will, uh, <laughs> Will, Bill Glasheen <laughs> is his, uh, William his Glasheen, byline yes. is W.M. Glasheen. Yes. And then Torque Mason uh, drove over from our central markets. So we got this game covered at uh, uh, all angles. Uh, should be uh, some great action photos that you can find later tonight online. Second down for the paper makers and Pendleton's going to go to the air. Got all day long deep down field. Good catch by Winnick showing great hands and no they say incomplete it must have hit the turf couldn't see so a little bit of a short throw but it was there but it was kind of tough because Winnick did have to come in lunge for it so it just must have hit the turf third down coming up and another opportunity for this Fondy defense yeah, and to uh, get a stop but a again, rare opportunity but again Winnick say. was wide open it's a matter of just executing if you're Kimberly, because all the, the the throws are there, or not the throws, the the positioning is there for your receivers. A rare uh, incompletion as well for this Kimberly passing attack. A look for Polakowski, I think number 11. Let's see where he's he's in the slot at the far side. Watch for him over the middle on this third and 11 play. Third and 12, I should say. Pendleton's looking downfield. Got time. He's got. His receiver, oh. that was Polakowski. Yeah. And now what do you do if you're Steve Jones? Oh, you got to punt. You got to punt. Be the first punt of the night, and the, the punt team is coming onto the field. So that that penalty, very crucial, took a nice long uh, 
gain negated it, and uh, here we are, fourth and 12. Punting situation as is number 12 for uh, Fonleck goes back there, and I don't have a number for is her. Is this name an opportunity him. for a fake? Oh, no, you don't want to do well, that. Well, you never Boy, know. Boy, you, you give the ball back to them right at the 33. This one might be over. Then you're up three touchdowns if you're the Cardinals. Yeah, catch the, the paper or the, the Cardinals. And there's a timeout by the paper maker. Interesting. A guy we don't see too much out there, Quentin Wynn, six foot three, three hundred pound lineman, does the punting for Kimberly Brett. She won like the NFL, what, <coughs> way way back in, like Jerry Kramer, a guy we had on Clubhouse <laughs> Live. He was doing <laughs> yes. field goals. Why can't you have an offensive lineman <laughs> kick field goals in the NFL these days? Old golden toe. There right? you go. So interesting uh, timeout for the paper makers. First one of the half with. 9.27 still to play here in this third quarter. <laughs> and wondering if uh, if there was a fake call and they decided to, to call a timeout. And Good, yeah, possibly. I, mean, I don't know what they, they saw something that they didn't like. So I, love it when you over. I love it when you speculate, Brett. <laughs> yeah. Well, there seems <laughs> to be a lot of speculation on Aaron <laughs> Rodgers uh, recently. but Love it. I'm sure you saw the Adam Schefter... Uh, Yes, I love the I love all the Interview problems going on at twelve sixty five Lombardi. The, the, yeah, Schefter being interviewed by Dan Patrick. Uh, oh, they're going for it, Brett. Oh, they are going to go for it. Fourth and twelve. So here we go. Fourth and twelve coming up. Let's see what Pendleton can do. Pendleton, he's got time going deep downfield and intercepted. No, knocked away. Smart play. Actually, that was actually you didn't a smart do that. play. Yeah, that was number fourteen, uh, Caleb Nels. He was kind of upset, but you get the ball. In Kimberly territory instead of coming up with that interception. Yep. So Brett, three nails. Straight, three straight incompletions by Pendleton. And the the Fondy defense, which has been beleaguered all game, comes up with some big stops. So Caleb nails the 5'10 sophomore. I kind of agree with going for it. I think he, it's, it's, it's catch-up mode. It's keep pace mode right now and a chance to – Keep your offense on the field. So now it's up to this Kimberly defense to try to slow down this rushing attack. And here we go. Kyle Jasper getting around to the corner. And there he goes. Unbelievable. He's into the end zone. One play, 44 yards. One play, 44-yard score for Wall Jasper. Yeah, you know, and Wall Jasper showing that speed. But Brett, the blocking was fantastic. And some of the Kimberly defenders took, took poor angles on that run, and Wall Jasper's just too quick. He's much faster than what maybe he appears to be. You talked about that sprinter speed, and he really showed it on that 44-yard touchdown run. Holy smokes. One play, 44 yards. Wall Jasper's fourth rushing score of the game. He's got runs of 55, 5, 44, and 44. That's his second 44-yard score of the night. And uh, the Cardinals have now opened up a three-score game. Shebrel bangs that one through. And as we look at our Fox Cities Marathon, community first Fox Cities Marathon and Festival Food Scoreboard, look at this. 49-28, the Cardinals with a three-touchdown lead over the Papermakers. Yeah, the Kimberly defense, again, coming in one of the state's best. No answer for Fondy's run game. Keep in mind, this was a 35-28 game at the half. Fond du Lac opens the half with an onside kick, recovers, and then on third and 11, Braylon Allen peels off a 47-yard run. Kimberly stopped. Fond du Lac takes over at the 44-yard line, and it just took needed one play for the 44-yard run by Kyle Walljasper in a seven-point game is now a 21-point margin. Fond du Lac, Ricardo, seven offensive possessions, Seven touchdowns tonight. Is that good? Uh, I'd say that's yeah. 100%, isn't it? Yeah, Steven Seidel uh, checking in. Uh, thank you for uh, the message here, Steve. Uh, he says, greetings from California. Thank you for bringing us this incredible game. It's unbelievable when you go. You guys always do a top-notch job. Shout-out to Paul Phillip, Kimberly football player, class of 2001, gets married next weekend. There we we go. will be in Wisconsin tomorrow. Hey, congratulations, Paul. Maybe you want to stay in California. It's probably warmer <laughs> yeah. out there. 
kick off uh, along the sideline. A return by number 26, Blake Berry, a, a sophomore running back. And I guess if you're Kimberly Ricardo right now, you, you got to talk to your offense and say, we can't make up 21 points on one drive. Let's, let's just, just get back on yep. the field. Let's get back to what we were doing, and let's see if we can start chipping away. But again, big big uh, kudos to Jorgensen um, for that you know the the pooch kick or the the onside kick to start the half. That really changed everything. That that was a momentum changer, wasn't it? Because you just felt like Kimberly, with what you said at halftime, showing that the the, the, the halftime stats offensively were close, that the papermakers had a great chance of tying this one up, and that onside kick led to a touchdown. And uh, Fond du Lac yet to be stopped as Winnick with the pass reception. Ball taken out to the 38. Seven yard gain brings up second down and three for Kimberly. Again, and the papermakers have a, a passing offense that can get them back in the game. It's a matter of their defense. They have shown absolutely no it's ability to stop this Fond du Lac run game. It's just like it's one play, two play, three play uh, drives for Fond du Lac. That's what's that's what's crazy in the, the explosive plays tonight. I don't know if I and can some recall of them, seeing anything like this. And some of them have come on third and long. Yeah, that third and eleven that uh, led to the long Braylon Allen touchdown was Caleb Frazier. He's going to move the chains on uh, the run, and I guess. Uh, Plenty of time left in this game, and if you're Kimberly, let's keep the offense on the field. Let's milk the clock here a little bit. Let's get this to a two-point, a two-possession game. And somehow, if you can get to the fourth quarter, only needing a couple scores, it's not impossible by any stretch of the imagination. But somehow, you got to figure out how to stop Fond du Lac. But nobody has done that this season. What, what, uh, uh, like you see, I think you mentioned a rushing machine, and that's what we've been seeing tonight. First and 10 at the 41 for the papermakers, trying to chip away at that three touchdown deficit. Frazier taking a big lick by Braylon Allen. Allen. Two good athletes going at it there, but uh, Frazier, who's had a nice game himself, picks up about four. Check that three yard gain. Second down and seven for the papermakers as a uh, Papermakers trying to make it uh, a two-touchdown game here, down 49 to 28. You're in the 7:10 mark on the clock on your community first Fox Cities Marathon and Festival Food Scoreboard. Pendle is going to keep it. Little play oh. fake, nice little run, boy. They got me, Brett. And uh, Pendleton dives for the first down, but not before he takes another shot from Braylon Allen. Oh, ball's going to be part, uh, spotted at the 49. Now, interesting, I see Kyle Waljasper on the sideline right now, so he's getting a little bit of a breather for Fond du Lac. You can see Braylon Allen there, number one, playing in the middle there, that linebacker spot. Braylon Allen listed at 6'2", 240 pounds. A lot of folks in this state excited to see him wearing the, the Cardinal Red uh, soon enough. Frazier, nice little room to maneuver. And look at Frazier off to the races, finally brought down. Boy, is he having a game himself. Looking good. He is as the ball is placed outside the 30. It looks like it's going to be at the 32. Sometimes you wonder about you. Look at Caleb Frazier. How did he escape the state? Exactly. 17-yard gain. Guy who finished, what, as a sophomore? What, what did he finish in a second in the 300 hurdles at, at Division One track? I mean, he's got some wheels as well. Uh, Northern Iowa getting a heck of a running back. First and 10 at the 32. Pendleton, two receivers set. Frazier in the backfield. Oh, nice play fake. And incomplete. I thought Frazier had it. Instead, uh, the intended receiver was Tyler Veith. Tell you this much, four straight incompletions from Pendleton, Brett. But time, time to throw. Yeah, second down and 10 at the 32. 5.51 5 left here in the third quarter as we have a papermaker down. 
think that was number 55. Brett, can you see through your binoculars there? Yeah, I can't catch the number right now. Let's see if uh, the young man is okay. By the way, we streamed last week's Kimberly Nina game, and Nina starting quarterback uh, Luke Elkin really took a shot and ended up having to be taken off of the field. I talked to his dad this week. Uh, by an ambulance. Um, but what's the update on Luke? Yeah, and he, he – everything came back fine. The CAT scans, the x-rays, all that kind of stuff. He's just a little sore in the back, sore in the neck. Um, his dad, Mike Elkin, the athletic director at Nina, uh, told me that, you know, he's going to be fine. Now, if this had happened in week one, he said – now, he's not, he's not playing this week. But he said if it had happened in week one of a you know conventional season, he'd be ready by week three or week four. Okay. So well, not, nothing, anything that would have took him out of the year or anything, but it was something that they, you know, were you know being safe with with the precautionary absolutely. measure. He had some, he had some neck pain, that, which mm -hmm. is why they, you know, if you remember, it was a long process getting him onto the gurney and then getting him into the ambulance and everything like that. But he's fine. He'll play baseball. He will. Good. And yeah, I actually emailed Mike uh, when we got when I got home last uh, Friday to say, hey, I hope everything's okay. I've known Mike since the late 1990s, uh, back when uh, I was first. Covering uh, Nina Menasha, uh, the Nina Menasha area in the sports scene. So uh, good to hear that Luke's doing well. He's one of our uh, hockey nominees, actually, in the uh, Wisconsin uh, Northeast Wisconsin High School Sports Award show. By the way, that show encompasses not just Northeast Wisconsin, but all ten of our markets: Green Bay, Appleton, Oshkosh, Fond du Lac, Manitowoc, Sheboygan, Wausau, Stevens Point, Wisconsin Rapids, and Marshfield. We're seeing the uh, Kimberly player on the ground. Just can't make out a number yet, Ricardo, based on uh, how he's laying on the field. At least he's moving around a little bit, so uh, that's a good sign. I see his legs moving, and he as he's being helped up. I can see it now, Brett. Can you catch that number? Is it 56? Is it Quinton Wynn? That is 56. That's Quinton Wynn, uh, starting offensive lineman and also punter for Kimberly. But good to see him sitting up. Hopefully he can get up on his feet and uh, everything will be A-OK. -okay. Quinton Wynn, a 6'3", uh, 300-pound senior offensive lineman. For the paper makers, walking off uh, under his own power. Good to see, and great news again on uh, on Luke Elkin. So that was definitely a, a worrisome situation when you see a, a young man taken off by ambulance. Oh yeah. Second and ten now as the game resumes here in the third quarter. Ball at the Fond du Lac 32 yard line, and uh, let's see what is the call for Caden Pendleton in this offense as Caleb Frazier now gets it running hard and sets up a nice third and uh, definitely a manageable situation. Four down territory without a doubt coming up for the papermakers. Third and six it appears to be. See what Pendleton has in store for the Fond du Lac defense, which has been playing much better of late. Pendleton's going to sling it quickly, and there's Polakowski wrapped up by number 15. Josh Reitz, the junior, but uh, that's going to be short by about a yard or two, so fourth down coming up for Kimberly. Ball will be at the 24 yard line, Ricardo, so fourth and two. Well, you gotta go for it, obviously, Absolutely. and this is one of those things where you, you have a couple of options here. You can try running it with Frazier. Maybe a short pass, uh, but you know there's one receiver set, and it's a closed, tight formation here, Brett, for Pendleton. Pendleton waits for the snap. No nope, play action. Pendleton on the run. He's got to get rid of it, slings it in the ground, incomplete. So the first time tonight where we really saw that Fond du Lac pressure come through and force uh, Pendleton to uh, get on the run and nothing doing. So yeah. another turnover on downs, and Kimberly 
or I should say Fond du Lac, uh, in control of this one right now. Brett, the second time that we've seen Kimberly kind of have a nice drive and then have it kind of short circuit, uh, you know, either inside the red zone or near the red zone for Kimberly. And, you know, you can't miss those shots because you know Fond du Lac's offense puts the pressure on you with that run game. And right now with 418 left in the third quarter, they're up three touchdowns, Brett. And this is this is a tough position for Kimberly's defense to be in, Brett, because that run game by Fond du Lac has shown to itself to be able to get a lot of yardage in big chunks. And quickly. And quickly. Well, Wall Jasper is going to hand off to, no, nope, yeah, Braylon Allen. And Allen brought down after a minimal gain. There's really good with the deception of the football. I, I, I was kind of confused there. I was looking at Allen. I thought he had it. Then Wall Jasper, he sells it so well like he has it. You know, even with, with the fake, like he has it tucked under his uh, arm there. But about a four-yard gain for Braylon Allen, second down coming up. Now, if you're Fond du Lac, I know you can put points on the board in a hurry, but maybe would it be advantageous for them to sort of maybe let's slow things down a little bit here. We've got a three-score lead. Let's milk the clock. Or just keep doing what they're doing. We're going to find out here uh, on second down is Wall Jasper. He's going to keep it. Looking for a hole uh, in the middle of that defense. Good job by Kimberly. Now forcing a third down. And about four for the Cardinals. Ten carries. Oh, this is what I have on officially for Wall Jasper, Brett. Ten carries, 236 yards. Wow. And as for Braylon Allen, ten carries, 218 yards. They've really done the damage. I think they've basically have carried the load the entire time. There was one run sh rush play by I think their receiver, uh, who, who I'm thinking of, Colleen. I think might have had one rush, but all the other yardage basically by those two players. Isn't that something? And that's what it was coming into the game. Uh, the, 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 the the load they shoulder when it comes to uh, the offense is phenomenal, and you, you know who's going to get the ball, and nobody can stop them right now. That offensive line, again, doing great work for Fond du Lac. I'll tell you what, Brett, I mean, we've seen some great teams. This team is kind of reminds me a little bit of that Muskego team a few years ago uh, with that great running game that they had with Current and um, just doing a lot of great things. And this team is even, to me, more impressive than that team, at least from the offensive side of the ball. That was a really good defensive team, though, Muskego was. Um, you know, Kimberly's team uh, that had... Uh, the running back, uh, why am I drawing a blank here? Blair? Blair Mulholland? Mulholland. Yeah. Um, he had 400-plus yards in that championship game, I want to say, or something near that. And uh, this team is explosive as that team. This, this is why it's unfortunate that we don't get to see this in a conventional sense of possibly getting down to Madison, Brett. We're, we're missing. Oh, quit your whining. I'm going to whine least a little bit. At least we have the game nah, tonight. I'd love to have seen this in Madison. Uh, at least they're playing. One of these two teams. you got to be more positive. No. Let me be a little negative. There's the the play action. Wall Jasper downfield. Wide open. And that's a first down. The first completed pass of the night for the Cardinals. And a big time pitch and catch to Logan Graff. Number 25 on the far sideline. He was wide open, Ricardo. And a, a nice throw by Wall Jasper. Big first down for the Cardinals. They're in business trying to add to this three touchdown lead. Ball's going to be at the 24-yard yeah. line. Brett, a gain of 45 yards. Boy, another explosive play. I, I'd love to just you know add up the plays of 20 or more yards tonight. It's just an incredible list so far by this Fond du Lac offense. First and 10 at the 24. And there's Colleen with the rush attempt. Yeah, is that is that a rush or a pass? Oh, look at this. He's in. It is a pass. Now that I think about it, Brett. That's 24 yards. We're going to call that a pass. Is that Colleen? It was Colleen. Six foot, 185 pound senior. He really showed a lot of patience on that, Brett. Let the play kind of develop and then use his athleticism to weave his way on that shovel pass. And uh, we're talking about possibly 56 points. Unreal. For the Cardinals. And that is eight 
Well, look at this, a two-point conversion attempt. Jasper looking for some room, and I think he's in. Yes. He Unreal. Wow. So we have 57 to 28 is the score. So I'm just updating my Twitter. You can follow me at PC Ricardo, Brett at PC Brett, and Rosie at Metal Rosie. A little bit of an interesting uh, situation there. You don't know, was that something get ha go haywire? Was that actually a design two point conversion? Well, it looked like there was uh, two receivers going out, Brett. I think it was a fake. Hmm. Fifty-seven twenty-eight. Now Fond du Lac with the lead as we look at our festival foods and community first Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. Eight offensive possessions for the Cardinals. Eight touchdowns. So one fifty-nine left here in the third quarter. There's Barry looking for some running room. Twenty-two point third quarter for the Cardinals. It broke open what was a pretty tight game. Remember, it was thirty-five twenty-eight at the half, and now fifty-seven twenty-eight uh, after that twenty-four yard hookup between Kyle Waljasper and Tyler Clean. So Pendleton. Back to throw, slings it over to Polakowski. Ball be placed uh, at the 36 yard line, so a gain of eight yards. So Kimberly just trying to get something put together offensively. I mean, they've they've moved the ball. It's a matter of finishing for the for the papermakers, I should say. But they're down now, nearly 30 points. 29, I should say. Caleb Frazier with the ball. You can see Wall Jasper trying to rip that ball out of Frazier's arms, but uh, Frazier gets the first down. Got an action email from uh, Dorothy Shoemaker. Can you announce where all these players are going to college to play football? Well, we do know for Fond du Lac, Kyle Wall Jasper will be going to Minnesota Duluth. Yes. Braylon Allen will be playing for the Badgers, and we know that Caleb Frazier, the uh, running back for Kimberly will be going to Northern Iowa. We know Tommy Ellison is actually going to be playing uh, the, the uh, safety for the papermakers. He'll be playing baseball at UConn, University of Connecticut. I don't. I'm not. I'm not sure about any other player though. I'm sure there'll be a number that will be playing. Uh, you know, at the WIAC level, uh, which is a fantastic Division Three league. But those are the kind of the the headliners, I guess, as far as you know, the the Division One level. Three-yard gain, second down and seven at the 47 for Kimberly. What an offensive showcase put together by the Cardinals, though, Brett. 57 points put up on a, on a pretty good paper baker defense heading into the game. Well, I'm sure coaches in the uh, Fox Valley Association are thrilled that Wall Jasper will be gone and that Braylon Allen uh, reclassified. It was an attempt for Cam Winnick, third down coming up. Don't have to deal with those guys uh, in the fall. Be interesting to see how this Fond du Lac team looks after uh, losing a couple of those guys. Uh, it'll be definitely a, a new look for Steven Jorgensen, but much like Kimberly, uh, we've seen in Appleton North in this league, and Fond du Lac is a, is a program that's uh, very well established. You know they'll be heard from next season and beyond. Third down for the Papermakers. Pendleton, he's going to keep it, run, looking for the first down, dives, and he's short, hit by Braylon Allen. 
He'll be two yards shy of the first down marker. Paul will be at the 48, and Allen's down yeah, there. Yeah, he's, he's getting up uh, slow, and he's favoring that ankle. Looks like he'll be okay. No, he's going he's gonna to stay in the game. I guess he just had to run it off a little bit. And oh, no, they're going to they're gonna take him out, though. You, you want to be better safe than sorry here. but I think Paul Chris just got on the phone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's enough, son. You've, you've done enough. I think he just called Steven Jorgensen <laughs> and said, that's enough. Yeah, again, Breland Allen, great defensive game as well, but 10 carries, 218 yards is what he has so far tonight on the offensive end. Oh, yes, thanks to Josh Giese, uh, Griffin Weagle, and Brett Peroni. we playing at Winona State yes, next year. Yes, Peroni, that's right. Peroni that's got right. injured in, during the basketball yep. season. I didn't know Griffin was going to uh, Winona State. Good for him. So he'll be playing uh, football at the next level as well. Thanks, Josh, for uh, sending you, that our way. You. Appreciate that uh, very much. So there you go, Dorothy. Some updates on where the kids will be playing collegiately uh, next season. Hey. I want to thank, uh, I mentioned our sponsor, but i got a, b a big thank you to the Appleton School District crew. Brian Durkee, Adam Hansen, Nick German, uh, kind of the IT part of things. We appreciate all the help they've given us in, in streaming games uh, wherever we are, whether it's basketball or football, but uh, and particularly here at Appleton East tonight. And then I got a, how about Ryan Hansen and Aiden Olson? Yeah, uh, Students, juniors here at Appleton East, also part of the... Uh, the charter school, Tesla, uh, the charter school here. Uh, Ryan and Aiden uh, uh, have been here providing technical support for us tonight. Uh, be oh, sure and we need it. Well, they, they got us set up, and those guys are fantastic. Uh, be sure to check out Ryan and Aiden's uh, excellent streaming work on the Appleton East YouTube channel. Search Appleton East and then YouTube online, and it will take you right to the link. They're doing great work, whether great work. it was uh, in the basketball season and uh, here in the spring season. They stream a whole bunch of uh, games and even some school activities so Ryan and Ryan and Aiden thank you so much as Pendleton gets the first down and more far sideline finally brought down out of bounds but uh, Ryan and Aiden a, a great setup uh, I wanted to give you guys a shout out we uh, truly appreciate uh, your support they're gonna be uh, they're very smart young men let me just say that very smart yes and they're probably gonna take our jobs uh, I would in think the next so. few years isn't that right, Rosie? Uh, I think our jobs are in jeopardy. <laughs> those guys are good, good at what they do. So ball at the 29-yard line. But thanks to those guys. Again, check them out, Appleton East YouTube channel. 19-yard gain for Pendleton on that fourth and short. A lot of great live streams uh, here at the, the high school. Thanks to those two. Parker Kester now looking for a running lane. He's going to get around the edge and finally brought down inside the 10. Good closing speed by number 15, Josh Reitz of the Cardinals. Or place the ball. It's going to be inside the 10. Ball's at the 9. So a nice 20 yard gain for Kester. First down goal to goal. Papermakers have not scored in the half, Brett. Uh, scoreless in the third quarter. Kester looking for some running room. Gets. Inside the five. Ball's at the four, so a five yard gain for Kester. Kester playing in his final game as a senior, Brett, a senior running back for Kimberly. Yeah, a uh, good uh, three pronged attack that we have seen this season but with. Uh, Kester and, of course, Caleb Frazier. And don't forget about Colin Oberman, the junior running back. I'm guessing he's going to take over quite a few of the carries uh, this coming fall. There's Kester looking for a, uh, well, let's see. Where is he going to be marked? About the two, one, two-yard line? Let's see where they spot it. It's going to be short, third down coming up. I think they have it at the two. I think they're uh, looking forward to seeing what the sophomore, number 26, Blake Berry, can do uh, at, at running back. Well, so they've never been... Kimberly's always had running backs. Yeah. They, they've always really done a great job of developing them and linemen, really. Well, pretty and much every, every, every position. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think about it. You look at any offensive end. But they've really, they've really had outstanding running backs uh, for the last, what, 
10, 15 years. Oh, you even go back and when when uh, J James, Jamie Wells and that that first run of championships by Kimberly, Caleb Frazier, and he's in from two yards out. So a two-yard score for Frazier. That is his third rushing touchdown of the night. Update my Twitter again. You can find me at PC Ricardo, Brett at PC Brett C, and Rosie at Metal Rosie. It looks like uh, a PAT attempt for Cam Zebel, number 16, junior. And uh, that one sails through the uprights. And with 9.55 remaining in this game, as we look at our festival foods and community first, Fox City's marathon scoreboard, we see Fond du Lac up 57.35 or Kimberly. Onside kick time, I would think, wouldn't you, Ricardo? I would imagine so. Checking out the uh, final games tonight here in the, the Fox Valley Classic Football Conference. Hopefully the last time I ever say that. Oh, Brett, I uh, wanted to mention something else. Thank you, Kimberly Track, for sending me this important nugget. Quentin Wynn will compete at in track and field at in the SEC at the University oh, of Auburn. Go. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Thank you, yes. Some more uh, Overruns at Kimberly Track, please. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. Excellent track program at uh, Kimberly High School. I might have to send that name over to Mark Stewart at the Journal Sentinel. He's putting together the top boys track athletes. Uh, he'd be one of them, wouldn't and, uh, he? He would be one to watch. So, Onside kick time coming up, I think. Let's see what we do here. And they're going to use the – oh, nice job. Look at Braylon Allen. <laughs> He's up there and makes it look easy as he uh, brings it down at the 50-yard line. And he's still hurting, though. He's got, look at that. He's hobbling off the field again. I think he got hurt. And uh, that's at that left leg or ankle. Oh, boy. And that's not a good sight. I hope it's just something minor, Brett. I think it is. I mean, he, he's walking off on his own power. If the trainers uh, take a look at him there as Fond du Lac uh, takes over at the 50 games. And, of course, we got this one, but also in the constellation of Bracket A, Nina taking on Appleton North. Bracket uh, B championship, De Pere at Oshkosh West. That's played at Titan, the constellation game. Oshkosh North at Sheboygan North, the Bracket C. Appleton East taking on Bayport up the, the road uh, in Swamico, and Pulaski's over at Gerke Field taking on Spash. Oh, boy. Are you kidding me? Is, is this... That's Wall Jasper from 50 yards out. One play drive again, Ricardo. Wow. <laughs> 50 yard score. The fifth rushing touchdown. Of the game for Kyle Wall Jasper. Yeah, and I, boy, I'm trying. I'm just trying to add up my stats here <laughs> for Wall Jasper. Yeah, I, I wish folks could see what you look like Ugh, in the booth. Is it? I'm all page flustered. after page after page on your but, legal pad. Um, I have it 11 for 268 uh, for Wall Jasper. Incredible. Wow. So, yeah, 64 to 35. I'm going to guess for Fond du Lac, uh, this is years and years of frustration you kind of so? being poured out here now uh, because they have been on the wrong side of some of these matchups five of the last six times in the playoffs. Um, maybe there was, uh, I know the w two years ago, they probably felt they were the better team, and then they, at Titan Stadium, they mm -hmm. lose uh, on that two-point conversion. I, I, was that overtime? Yeah. Um, so this is just years of pe frustration pent up kind of washing all out on the on Appleton East's picket field here. Mm -hmm. 
unbelievable. Five rushing touchdowns for Wall Jasper. He's got runs of scoring runs of 55 yards, five yards, a pair of 44-yard runs, and now the 50-yard run. One play, 50 yards. Incredible. How many how many touchdowns does he have? Five. So again, 11 carries, 268 yards unofficially. And Braylon Allen has three touchdown runs. He's got a 66-yarder, a 33-yarder, and a 47-yarder. That's eight touchdowns between those. And then Kyle Wall Jasper has accounted for a sixth touchdown through the air, 24-yard pass to Tyler Colleen. Well, Pendleton, he's got, is that Polakowski? It is. Oh, nice throw and beautiful route. Nice catch. So ball at the 32-yard line. Yeah, 30-yard pass play on that one to Polakowski, Brett. Again, the, this half got off to a auspicious start for Kimberly. They, they, you know, they were the, uh, I guess, Fond du Lac had the little uh, onside kick that they recovered, set everything in motion for them as oh, nice. oh, the second Beautiful, again. Beautiful, yes. That's inside the 10. They're going to mark it at the 8-yard line. First and goal coming up. You might have said that it might that that you know it, it got to be where Kimberly could not they weren't allowed to really make a mistake on offense. They had to keep up with with Bonlack. You know, there was the early in the first half. I know they had the one drive that fizzled out there inside the red zone, Brett, and you know, that kind of it sits you back. You're chasing points I then. still think that uh, onside kick was a huge turning point though. Different game uh, as Pendleton looking. Oh, oh, oh. yeah, those Wait behind him. Yeah. And a nice play by number 15, uh, Josh Reitz. Cam Winnick, the intended receiver there. But uh, it's a different ball game. Uh, the complexion of the game changes because if Kimberly uh, traditionally uh, gets the kickoff to start and it's a tie game, then okay, then the, the screws tighten a little bit. But all of a sudden, that onside kick, Fond du Lac recovers, score. And then all of a sudden you feel a little bit of a, a pressure mounting for the papermakers to really try to uh, keep pace. But here's the thing. Fond du Lac has yet to be stopped offensively at all tonight. In any series they've scored, every series has been ended with a touchdown as Parker Kester looking to... Yeah, short of the goal line, inside the five. Looks like they'll mark it actually at the three. Nine offensive possessions, nine touchdowns. That's efficient. <laughs> That's like a Tecmo Bowl. Nine for nine. What's that? Is that a thousand percentage? I tell you what, if you were a baseball player and you were nine for <laughs> nine, that uh, that'd be a heck of a heck of a start to your season, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Third and goal. Ball at the three. And Kester is, I believe, he's in, and he is. Braylon Allen's still out there, Brett, with that injured leg. So Kester with the three-yard touchdown. Boy, it's going to take me a long time to read the scoring. <laughs> uh, I might just kind of summarize it. <laughs> a lot of touchdowns. Again, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at PC Ricardo, Brett at PC Brett. See, as that's uh, it was muffed. That blocked? Yes. Well, yeah, it looked like it was uh, just a little bit muffed. 
So 64 to 41 will be the score as that extra point is no good. 64 41, as Ricardo said, as we look at our festival foods, community first Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. Again, uh, the folks at Festival Foods know that getting involved and doing good is part of being a good neighbor and member of the community, and they strive to be a true asset to our communities and embody the give back spirit of Wisconsin. And Community First Fox Cities Marathon registration now open for the 30th running of the marathon. Visit foxcitiesmarathon.org for details. Hey, to finish up what's going on in the conference tonight, Bracket D, Appleton West at Green Bay Southwest, at Schwabenon at Green Bay Preble, and Green Bay East at Manitowoc. Waiting for the kickoff. Imagine another onside attempt coming up. I don't think they have Braylon Allen out here for this one. And there's kind of that short little pooch. And uh, nope, I think it skipped out of bounds. Hundred and five points scored tonight, Ricardo. That's one of the more. Uh, this might be the most we ever had on a live stream. Oh boy, I don't want you to have you go look all those games up, but I, I can't imagine a game. Well, I know there's been fifteen touchdowns scored tonight. Okay, that might be the most. Yeah, this looks like a basketball score. First down and 10 at the 40, <coughs> Wall Jasper. And we do have a backup in at running back for. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe with Allen. And boy, look at Wall Jasper go. My goodness. First down. Is Wall Jasper, is he a track guy? Yes, from what I remember. Now, Allen back out onto the field for uh, the, the Cardinals. First down run for Wall Jasper. Ball at the Kimberly 48-yard line. Little shovel pass. And look at that. The little run uh, after the pass by David MacArthur, the six-foot senior. Ricardo, I, Fond du Lac's not done, are they? No. You know, it's a final game for a lot of these players. They want to, you know, be on the field as long as possible. You know, especially some of these seniors. You know, a guy like MacArthur was a senior. He, he I remember him from last mm -hmm. year, Brett, making a play or two. But there was a flag here as uh, the ball is being marched back. I think this might be the first flag on Fond du Lac. I think you're right. Oh, there's the flag. I'm having a hard time seeing that on the turf. That's all right, Brett. You're getting older, my ah, friend. I'm getting old. I can't wait to eat my cereal tonight. The Metamucil. <laughs> Yeah, wash it down with a big old glass of Metamucil. There we go. <laughs> be first and appears to be 15 at the 48. I got to thank our guy, Mike Cruz. I know he's watching tonight. Appreciate him and his support of our uh, high school live streams, Clubhouse Live as well, and getting us uh, yep. the sponsor partnerships. Thanks, Cruiser. Mike. Look forward to working with you again uh, this next season, both with Clubhouse Live and our Varsity Games of the Week. Don't forget about Varsity Roundtable. Is that going to finally... After a year hiatus, come back the yes. uh, next season? I can't wait. And, you know, we've talked about maybe some changes that we're going to do to make it a little more entertaining. And, you know, I know the athletes. I've been asked by some of the athletes if that's coming back. I said, yes, be patient. We'll be back. How to get through COVID and get, uh, get everything situated with that. But uh, looking forward to that, kind of getting back uh, in the fall to the uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday grind of Clubhouse Live on Monday, Roundtable on Wednesday, and then our game of the week on Friday. Second down coming up. Wall Jasper, a little pitch to Braylon Allen. Watch out. There he goes. Oh, look at, look at Allen move. 
and he's going to go into the end zone. Are you kidding me? 48 yards, Ricardo. Well, that's on Kimberly's defense right there. They had him bottled up, and Allen able to weave his way for the touchdown. So I'm going to have to double check what his yardage was. I know Wall Jasper has 12 carries for 280 yards. Wow, 70 points. And let's see what uh, Allen has. This is an unbelievable performance tonight. Uh, that's 10 touchdowns on 10 offensive drives. I have 12 carries, 270 yards for Braylon Allen. Mm. Big time uh, showcase for both him and Wall Jasper tonight. Unreal. Well, well, we're getting, what, uh, 112 points tonight, Brett. Now I've got four touchdown runs for Braylon okay. Allen. I've got uh, runs of 66, 33, 47, and 48 yards. Just those four runs would be a heck of a game. And then five touchdown runs for Kyle Walljasper. So that's nine touchdowns between those two guys. And then, uh, of course, Wall Jasper and Colleen hooking up in the third quarter on a 24-yard pass. That's 10 touchdowns for the Cardinals. Incredible. Still have half a quarter to play here. Uh, MacArthur with uh, a nice tackle here on uh, kickoff coverage. 71-41, uh, Brett, yeah. Uh, Braylon Allen, 12 carries, 270 yards. You said the four touchdowns, right? Yeah. And then Wall Jasper, 12 carries, 280 yards, five touchdown rushing, and then another passing. So Might have been two. No, yeah, yeah so one pass. What's that combined between the two just rushing? 24 <laughs> carries for what? 550 yards. Oh, my goodness. No, actually, more than that. Between the two guys? Yeah, 550 yards. Wow. Pendleton slinging it downfield, looking for Winnick. What a catch by Winnick. And he's on his feet trying to get. No, oh, he's finally wrestled out of bounds right in front of, uh, I believe, Torque Mason, our photographer. Finally chased out by number 18, Colleen. I don't know how uh, Winnick came up with that. Well, that was thrown right on a dart, Brett, and he just extended his hands. That ball found its mark. Boy, great catch. And like you said, Ricardo, a pinpoint throw by Pendleton. Got to be up uh, well above 300 yards passing tonight. Yeah. He? He's got to be close. 57-yard pass play I have unofficially on that one, Brett. And uh, Kimberly not done either. And Pendleton, he's going to tuck it in. Nothing open downfield. Good decision. Takes a big lick. And inside the 15. Neither team putting in subs, Brett, by the way, I've noticed. You're just going to let these uh, players, these seniors, play their final game is what it is. Uh, that's a good, I like it. That's a good move. A lot of these seniors, this is their, the, their last game. Some of them aren't playing at the next level, Brett. Second down and one ball at the 14-yard line. Papermakers looking to uh, add another score or two tonight as Frazier, I think he's got the first down. Where's the ball placed at the 12? I'm just waiting to see if it is a first down. Yep, they're moving the chain, so ball at the 12. Again, Caden Pendleton's a junior, so he'll be coming back next year. I mean, this is all experience for him. I know, is it Polakowski is also a junior? Yeah. And Wenick is as well. So, uh, yeah, they're going uh, to be pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, Kimberly will be back 
Obviously, Fond du Lac loses uh, both Wall that, that, Jasper that, and Braylon Allen. That's the interesting question. What is this team going to look like without those two uh, guys anymore? Definitely going to be different, but like I said earlier, it's an established program now. It's one of the uh, powerhouses, certainly, in this conference, and they'll be heard from. It should be kind of, some, uh, kind of a new-look conference, too, I think. You're going to have the FBA again. But aren't uh, Appleton West and Hortonville going to the yes, VFA like with Spash and in the uh, Central Schools? i got to worry about another another change there, Brett, another placement I change. I know. It's tough to remember, isn't it? I'm getting old. Yeah, you are too. I need an assistant. Yeah, maybe you need to eat some cereal tonight. <laughs> I might. Yes, Frazier. Oh. oh, boy, nice tackle there. I think it's at 25. Oh, that's 25. We he knocked gets, him down. Yeah, Logan, Logan Graf. Graf. Woo. I think one of the few. Times that Frazier has actually been knocked back from negative yardage. Yeah, you don't see that very often, do you? So ball's going to be uh, marked at the 11 yard line. So third down and maybe nine? Yeah, I have it nine. Third down and nine. Pendleton, play action, looking. For the end, oh, wide easy. open. Way too easy. And that is number 17, Tyler Veith. So 11 yards out. It looks like they're going for two on this one, Brett. Pendleton looking to his right, slings it, and looks like that was knocked away, so the two-point conversion pass is no good. Now, if you'd have told me tonight that Kimberly was going to put 47 on the board, I would have thought, well, he <laughs> got a pretty good shot at winning mm -hmm. this game. But uh, this Fond du Lac offense, Ricardo, you called it earlier uh, the rushing machine, and that is exactly what we've seen tonight. Between Wall Jasper and Braylon Allen, they've accumulated just those two guys combined, nine rushing touchdowns and over 500 yards on the ground. We've got 314 left still. Yeah, I was just going to wonder, what, what does Fond du Lac want to do? Go for one more? That's a good question. I know we mentioned this last week. I guess it's a quick opportunity. But, again, uh, congratulations. John Murphy, the new uh, head bas yes. boys basketball coach at Kimberly High School. Of course, he coached uh, Seymour many, many, 33 years at Seymour. Three state championships, 12 tournament appearances. He's a Wisconsin Basketball Coaches Association Hall of Famer, one of just six coaches in state history with at least 600 career victories. Murphy uh, replaces Lucky Wirtz, who's retiring uh, both as a teacher and a uh, head coach. Great run for Lucky, 13 seasons leading the Papermakers. Of course, Kimberly advanced to the Division I Boys State Championship uh, this past season, and good luck to Lucky on retirement. Well-deserved, and uh, looking forward to working with John again. Ah, big fan of John. Yeah, he took the year off uh, away from, from basketball, and he's going to be back at it, and uh, what a hire for Kimberly. So should be interesting to see how uh, that transition goes for the papermakers. I'm guessing they won't miss a beat. And you know what the weird thing is? You know, this is our last high school live stream football game of the season. feels like we should be getting ready for basketball. Well, instead, we're going to be getting ready for summer mm -hmm. and then football again. Don't get that uh, that usual uh, quick turn and go into the to the hoops. You know, speaking of Apple and East, the girls' team here is going to be sensational. Uh, yes, they next return season. just about every player. If, if I think, just uh, they might have, they might be missing one or two seniors. So it'll be one of the top ranked teams in the state. So looking forward to getting back here, hoping uh, to live stream some Patriots girls basketball. We did a few games here. I think this past season saw them take on Bayport and Nina. At FBA on the girls' side, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of good players, a lot of good teams. You know, Kimberly's going to be good. Hortonville, they, they were turning what, their, their top seven scores. Kakana's going to be tough. Brett, there was a flag on that last uh, onside kick, so now we're going to do it over again. Another chance to uh, work 
on the onside uh, kick drill. Yeah, I got to thank you guys too. Uh, this uh, this will be our 32nd game that we uh, live stream this year. And if you had told me back in September that we would have gotten 32 games in with COVID being what it was, especially back last fall, I'd said you guys were you, you're crazy. So uh, <laughs> good work by you and Rosie. I see you down there, Rosie. We got 32 games in. Hey, great work by you. You're the one who schedules all this stuff and well. got to talk with the ADs and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Fondy somehow recovered that. It yeah, looked like I Kimberly thought, was all over it. Yeah, I thought uh, it was going to go right into uh, Kimberly's <laughs> hands, but uh, finally does come up with the loose ball. But, yeah, good good work, guys. You know, a unique season. We had we had not only the unknown of if these games were going to be played. We had a couple cancellations in the fall football season, but we, we just had we had to, we had to be safe. You know, we had to make sure that everything was good for the athletic directors, and, and they were always good at w working with us and making sure – that we could be spread out. So got 32 games in. That, that's quite a few. Well, Brett, uh, and we and actually, again, another shout-out to the folks here who helped us. Uh, you have their names, right? Because we we just went this whole live stream without really an incident. Hey, it, there's still three minutes oh, boy, left. Did so, I just so, jinx so, us? So take it easy. Yeah, I'll say their names one more time. Yes, that's number 11. Check that, the number 16, Braden Eidenbrot. But, yeah, again, we talked about, I said, uh, the Appleton School District crew of Brian Durkee, Adam Hansen, Nick German, and then the, 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 the tech gurus, I said, the student and tech streaming gurus. We got Ryan Hansen and Aiden Olson. They're, they're yeah, right, behind, right us. behind us. They're making sure that everything is running smooth as silk. And, again, they're here to provide technical support for us tonight. Juniors here at Appleton East High School, they set us up really, really good and check them out. Uh, all their work on the Appleton East YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of great uh, work by them uh, when it comes to games, and I think they've got the, some some different school-related streams coming up. So, uh, again, it's only a matter of time before they boot us out and they hire those two guys. Yep. They're coming for our jobs. They are. But we appreciate them uh, for setting us up because uh, they did a fantastic job. Third down and three as Fondy. Looks like they have a lot of backups in other than Wall Jasper. Actually, I think, uh, yeah, he isn't still in there, Wall Jasper. And what's up uh, with you in, in the coverage of this game tonight? Yeah, I'll uh, be uh, talking to hopefully both coaches, maybe a player or two, um, you know, kind of wrapping up the season. I'm sure I'll have some sort of wrap-up of the season, maybe things that we learned. Um, but I'll tell you this much is that I also have my uh, all-area football team coming out then. I'll be able to complete that, Brett. Um, that'll be for the post Crescent coverage area, though. Okay. And um, be some Kimberly so sorry, kids so Fondy kids won't be on that team. That's just for Kim for the post Crescent coverage area. Um, but yeah, that's coming up shortly. I have the volleyball one almost ready to go again. That's post Crescent coverage area. First and ten. It looks like at the thirty-nine. So a nine-yard gain for Wall Jasper. Yeah, and as for us, we'll be back at it this August, right? Back for another season of Varsity Game of the Week action. No more uh, Varsity Game of the Week live streams coming up for us. Unless we want to do some spring baseball. But, uh, I think we got a lot going on with uh, the Sports Award show and kind of getting things uh, situated with that. Right. Seventy-one of forty-seven as we look at our festival foods and community first Fox Cities Marathon scoreboard. And it looks like Fondy wants to call a timeout. Carter do a little celebrating. So a big win for them. And you know, I I can say this because I'm a bit of a homer for the valley. I don't know if I don't see how Fond du Lac isn't the best team in the state. You put up seventy one points against Kimberly, yeah. one of the top three teams in the state. Uh, you add in Muskego. You're not going to sit here and tell me that Muskego could beat this team. I, I can't disagree with that, Ricardo. I mean, this is an incredible offensive display tonight. And, of course, the unfortunate thing is we'll never know. This might have been Fondy's best team they've ever had you at know, the school. The hype and, 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 and like, like got a text from somebody that said, boy, as advertised, and I said, yeah, no doubt about it. They uh, were every bit as good as what folks have been saying as uh, now they're just going to take a knee. They got number three. Steven Schreider in at uh, quarterback. They, they got all the uh, players off the field for one last hurrah from the fans here, and they'll let the clock run out. And you can see uh, the coaching staff or one of the coaches talking with Braylon Allen. 
four touchdowns for the future Badger tonight. Five touchdowns by Kyle Waljasper. Nine total between the two standouts. And it's one thing, I, I guess, uh, what, what's so unique about those two, Wall Jasper and Allen, is th their threats every time they touch the ball, and we saw that. You know, th every time they touch the ball, they could be at the 11-yard line and run for 89 yards like that. Yeah. Tough, tough game for Kimberly, but Brett, I mean, sometimes you run up against that buzzsaw, and that's what they are. You know, that's what Fond du Lac is, just a buzzsaw right now. And this is their year. And this is their championship. This, this is, is their how they championship. It. And this is, to me, I still, I don't see how Muskego beats this team. And maybe there's some folks from Muskego watch. I just don't see how any team this year beats Fond du Lac. This was their year. Well, I guess uh, we always close it out, uh, Ricardo, with uh, some thoughts on this one. Well, Kimberly, in a, in a few months, Brett, is going to retool. And with the g people they have coming back, they should be seen as one of the top two or three teams in the state. Fond du Lac, there's a few more questions there. When you lose players the caliber of Wall Jasper and Braylon Allen, you're going to take a hit. Now, we'll see what Coach Jorgensen can do in terms of reloading that team. But uh, for right now, I see Kimberly as, as, as a favorite to win the D1 title just from who they have coming back. they got a lot, a lot of pieces. Yes. And, uh, you know, while it, if you're a Kimberly fan, the loss stings, and if you're in that program, this is going to sit with you for a while. The good thing is this spring season in many ways was uh, – I don't want to say you know, scrimmages or anything, but it, this was anticlimactic. Yeah, I mean, but this was this was opportunities to get snaps, get yeah. get, t get time in, and really get ready for uh, a, a return to normal in, in a fall season with a nine-week schedule and then the long playoff uh, stretch. So, uh, a lot of work was was accomplished, I think, this spring and playing these seven weeks. Definitely got to give Fondy credit. I've seen a lot of state champions and five state champions in recent years with Kimberly and then Muskego. They're as good as any. They're as good as any one of those teams. You know, the, the Fondy Cardinals are, at least offensively. I can't think of another team that explosive. Fred, I'm going to get down there and start doing my thing. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Rosie. You've been great, my friend. And uh, what, our final live stream, That's at least it. for football. Yeah. We got 32 in, and Rosie and I might do some new side live streams. We'll see how that goes. But as far as varsity game of the week, we're, we're done until August. Fred, thank you so much for doing a great job scheduling everything during this pandemic. And, uh, hey, in a couple of months, we'll be back at it, my friend. We'll be doing we'll be a lot, Have a great a lot warmer. So hey, let me run. Let me just summarize the scoring because it's way, way too, way too much to uh, go uh, down the line. But Fond du Lac uh, again, nine touchdowns combined between Wall Jasper and Braylon Allen. Let's do Wall Jasper first. He had scoring runs of 55, 5, 44, 44, and 50 yards. And for Braylon Allen, he had runs of 66, 33, 47, and 48 yards. The last touchdown was a, a pass between uh, Kyle Waljasper and number 18, Tyler Colleen. That was a 24-yard strike. Uh, Kimberly had touchdown runs three uh, for Caleb Frazier of two, seven, and two yards. Also looking at Pendleton, uh, he had a, a touchdown pass, 24-yard strike uh, to Cam Winnick. Uh, Pendleton also had a six-yard touchdown run in the second quarter. And then we saw Pendleton and number 17, Tyler Veith, hook up on an 11-yard strike. Also, don't forget about uh, number 21, Parker Kester. He had a three-yard score. So with the victory, Fond du Lac finishes its season 7-0. They are champs of the AB bracket in the Fox Valley Classic Football Conference. Kimberly wraps up its season at 6-1. and one. As for us... Again, we'll be back at it this August as we kick off a new season of Varsity Game of the Week live stream action, beginning with high school football. Week 1 games are August 19th and the 20th. Not all that long away, really. I'll announce our matchups all season long on my Twitter account. That's at PCBreadC, so please give me a follow. And remember, you can access our previous Game of the Week live streams on our USA Today Network Wisconsin websites. Just go to the sports section and scroll down until you see the Watch Our Varsity Game of the Week prep live streams link. Don't forget it about the great subscription deal, the digital subscription to any of our USA Today Network Wisconsin websites, including the Post Crescent and the Fond du Lac Reporter. Six months for $1. Go to one of those uh, websites, for instance, postcrescent.com, and then slash subscribe. Same with fdlreporter.com slash subscribe. Get in on that great deal. We appreciate your support 
of local journalism. Last but not least, thanks so much to our sponsors uh, this season, First Festival Foods. The folks over there know that getting involved and doing good is part of being a good neighbor and member of the community, and they strive to be a true asset to our communities and body the give back spirit of Wisconsin. And the Community First Fox Cities Marathon. Registration now open for the 30th running of the marathon. Visit foxcitiesmarathon.org for details. So for Rosie, for Ricardo, and of course the crew with USA Today Network Wisconsin, I'm Brett Christofferson signing off from Pickett Field here on the campus of Appleton East High School. Once again, the final score tonight, Final Act 71, Kimberly 47. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Have a great night.